you up as a ninth grader, played in that game. They got beat pretty good by Junction City, but he made a big impression catching both of the balls that they threw that night, one for a touchdown. So that was kind of the beginning of his high school stardom. And that's when people started to kind of pay attention to him, and he got serious about it. So when I saw the score flash across and I was a wreck, I thought about it because I know that was a heartbreaking loss. But Clarendon's still a team that can make a deep run in the playoffs in 2A. I think they have a chance to get to Little Rock. And But a guy like that on any given night, he can – Hurt you in multiple ways. All right, Nate Olson of Scorebook Live. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk with Nate. We've got a little bit of a discussion on 7A football, and then we are also going to talk about 5A football. So we have a lot more to come on our final segment. I'm Michael Westbrook from the Prostate Cancer Awareness Foundation Studios. Stay with us. This is the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. For over 70 years, we at the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas have had our game face on. Our passion for delivering reliable, affordable power to every corner of Arkansas is stronger than ever. And with 17 electric distribution cooperatives, we cover more than 60% of Arkansas. That's power to more than half a million homes, farms, businesses, winter, spring, summer, and cool fall football Friday nights. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, powering the thrill of Friday night lights. I'm Rex Nelson. Outside of a state's natural beauty, the thing that strikes me most as I travel Arkansas is the junk in yards and trash along the highways. In a place that markets itself as the natural state, we've too often been guilty of, at best, ignoring our natural treasures, at worst, polluting and littering them. Let's take pride in our state by keeping it litter-free. Visit KeepArkansasBeautiful.com to get involved. This message brought to you by this station, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association, and the Keep Arkansas Beautiful Commission. A smile is a powerful thing, especially when it's protected by the nation's largest network of dentists, Delta Dental. Not only is a healthy smile a good indicator of your overall health, it also comes in handy when you're stealing the fries off your friend's plate, even though you didn't want fries. But here you are, smiling that healthy smile of yours, taking one after another. Schedule a checkup today and unleash your smile power with the affordable insurance plans from Delta Dental of Arkansas. When it comes to heating my home, my water, cooking meals, or drying clothes, nothing beats natural gas from CenterPoint Energy. It's my most affordable option. It costs less to use than most other energy sources, and it's easier on the environment. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. But if you're replacing an appliance, choose it. To learn more about enjoying the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. CenterPoint Energy. Always there. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, make plans for your visit to the Saracen Casino Resort only 40 minutes from downtown Little Rock. Play this month to win your share of up to $100,000 in prizes, including an awesome top-of-the-line Ford F-150 Platinum pickup truck from Trotter Ford. Every Saturday night in September, Saracen will give away thousands of dollars in free slot play. Then on September 26th, be on hand for your chance to win that Ford XLT Sport F-150 pickup. Saracen is Vegas, Arkansas style. Gambling problem? Call 800-522-4700. At Simmons Bank, we've been helping our customers' dreams come true since 1903. We have the products and services fit for you and the tools to help you manage your finances with ease and security. Whether you're saving and investing for the future, starting a new business, or buying a new home, we're with you every step of the way. Simmons Bank is proud to support Friday Night Football in Arkansas. Simmons Bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Did you know you can save lives and help flip the script on organ and tissue donation in Arkansas by flipping a burger, flipping your hair, or doing a flip with friends? 20 people die every day waiting for organ transplants. Take the Aurora Flip It for Life Challenge and help us increase organ and tissue donor registration in our state. Share on social media, tag Aurora, and use hashtag Flip It for Life. Learn more and register to become an organ and tissue donor at flipitforlife.org. Welcome back to the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show as we reach the final segment Nate Olson rejoins us on the Centerpoint Energy studio line. Nate, let's talk 7A football in Arkansas. A big matchup between Fort Smith Northside and North Little Rock. In a situation where a lot of teams make the playoffs, 
it's not always a must win each week, but we're getting down to the crunch time now, and uh, this really is a must win with the way the game ended last week for Northside and also just kind of where North Little Rock is at right now as a program. This is certainly a huge, huge game. It really is. The 7A Central, while you were talking about that, it came to my mind that it has become very deep. We, we thought about Brian. We wondered who could challenge them. Conway has kind of emerged as that top challenger, but Cabot is very good. Uh, they play Bryant this week, and North Little Rock is still a team to be reckoned with. And Northside has kind of stuck their nose in there and said, what about us? You know, we might be able to make some noise in the playoffs too, almost upending Conway. I mean, they had them on the ropes. Conway has to score 20 seconds left. So this is a big game because – uh, whoever loses this is going to be in the lower rung of the playoff picture. All right, Nathan, let's talk 5A football, 5A West in particular. Greenbrier is ranked third in the state. They go up against Farmington. What can you tell us about the Greenbrier and Farmington matchup this week? Uh, these teams can put points on the board. They both got very good quarterbacks that are, are very different. Cooper Wilcox, the senior, multidimensional, can, can hurt you with his arm and his legs, a real good scrambler. Uh, racked up a lot of yards and total offense this year and and having a great year kind of leading a surprising green briar, briar ball club carter McElhaney is his right hand guy a reliable target fast one of the fastest uh, times in the 100 meters at the meet of champs a really good 40 time at the razorback camp guy that's trying to get some college interest but very very fast look for him on a lot of go routes with wilcox in this game and then Cameron Van Zant, the sophomore, uh, Jari Eldridge has come in and breathed life in this program. One of the things he's done is taken this sophomore and really molded him into a fantastic quarterback. And he's got a really good receiver to throw to in Justin Logue. He's a senior, 168 yards receiving on just six catches last week against Clarksville. So a couple dynamic duos in this game. They've also got other guys that can catch the ball um, defensively, probably give the edge to Greenbrier there. And, Farmington's had to come back in a lot of their games, so that's something to watch, too. That's Nate Olson of Scorebook Live, and that is our show this week. Our show is brought to you by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Gift Arkansas 529 Education Savings Plan, Hot Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau, Keep Arkansas Beautiful, Arkansas Delta Byways, Simmons Bank, Saracen Casino and Resort, UAMS, Vaccinate Arkansas, Centerpoint Energy, Arkansas Prostate Cancer Awareness Foundation, Arkansas Scholarship Lottery, Delta Dental, Arkansas State Parks, and Aurora. I'm Michael Westbrook. I'll talk to you again next week. You've been listening to the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. The following is a special sports presentation from the EAB Sports Network. It's time for Nettleton Raider football on 94.1 Bob FM. Presented by NEA Baptist, First National Bank, Cavanaugh Auto Group, Jonesboro Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, St. Bernard's, Domino's Pizza, and Real Estate Nate. Now let's go to the NEA Baptist broadcast booth and join Craig Miller for the First National Bank pregame show. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the First National Bank pregame show. This is week eight of the 2021 Nettleton Raider football season. Tonight, we are on location at Sam Smith Stadium on the campus of Forest City High School. Here in about 30 minutes, the undefeated 7-0 Nettleton Raiders are going to be taking on the Forest City Mustangs in a game of tackle football. My name is Craig Miller, and I'm joined in the NEA Baptist broadcast booth by my tag team partner, Andy Shatley. Andy, it's been a while. Welcome back to the booth. Man, it has a two-week hiatus uh, or sabbatical. I don't know what word you find. <laughs> I have to look those up in the dictionary, make sure I use them right. But it's been, it seems like a long two weeks off, and I've missed it. Uh, had some things going on, and uh, now we're back in action, back in the booth. Uh, high school football, beautiful night. Starting to get a little crisp outside. Feels good. Uh, feels great. It's a great night for football. Well, the Raiders got along just fine without you. Last, <laughs> last week, it was definitely a, a happy homecoming as we celebrated 125 years of Nettleton Public Schools with a big 54-7 to win over Green County Tech. Andy, I know you were on the stage singing last Friday night, but did you get a chance to watch any of the game on the replay? And if so, what would you think about the Raiders' performance? I did, and they, were, you know, they really did exactly what they should have done. Uh, 
they're a very good football team. They're well balanced on defense and offense, executed well, put points on the board, spread the ball around, and played great defense. And I think that's exactly what Coach Hampton wants to see, you know, every Friday night on this team. The last two weeks, they've absolutely done that against Paragold and Green County Tech and look to do it again tonight. And we're about 28 minutes away from the kickoff, and we'll see if the Raiders can do it again tonight. For right now, we're going to take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll talk about tonight's matchup. You're listening to the first National Bank pregame show here on the EAB Sports Network. Branches don't have the digital capabilities you need. But why not have the best of both worlds? At First National Bank, we have all the online banking tools you could ever need. Plus, if you need something, we have real people in real places near you. Digital, with branches and real people. We know you can't be everywhere at once, but we can be anywhere you are. Check it, snap it, track it, pay it, move it, and ask it anywhere. First National Bank, putting you first, always. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Ship anything, anywhere at your number one shipping source, Pack Mail in Jonesboro. Bring anything to Pack Mail, and they'll pack it, ship it, crate it, freight it, no matter how big, fragile, or awkwardly shaped. Since 1998, Pack Mail has been your number one shipping source, the only authorized shipper of all the major carriers, UPS, FedEx, DHL, the Postal Service, and freight services, all in one store. At Pack Mail, you have choices. Here's Pack Mail Tim to tell us more. Trey, we are the experts at finding solutions for even the most demanding shipping situations. And our experienced staff can help you choose the best option. So if you need to go to the post office, then FedEx, or all the way out to UPS Terminal, and then get that international shipment to DHL, you can do it all in one fast, convenient, and friendly place. Pack Mail. See, I told you, Pack Mail ships anything, anywhere, through any shipper. Pack Mail. Voted the number one printing, packaging, and shipping store in Jonesboro. Don't trust your shipping needs to just anybody. Trust Pack Mail. 361 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro. Ship anything, anywhere, today at Pack Mail. Did you know for the first time in years the percentage of positive drug tests has increased among workers due to increasing use of methamphetamines and marijuana? Employment drug testing is a powerful risk management tool that provides a safer, more productive workplace. It helps decrease employee turnover and absenteeism. Reduces employer risk and lowers workers' compensation incentive rates by reducing the chance of accidents and injuries. A drug free workplace program can ensure that you have a safer, more productive workplace. National Med Test Incorporated is a company who specializes in this field. Give them a call today at 931 1993 and set up a program that's right for you to make your place drug free. National Med Test Inc., making businesses and schools drug free. And we welcome you back to the first National Bank pregame show. We're in Forest City tonight where the 7-0 Nettleton Raiders will be taking on the Forest City Mustangs. Forest City is a good traditional football school with a long and great tradition of fielding winning football teams. However, we Raiders have not played them very often in our history. In fact, we started our football program in 1965 and we didn't play Forest City until 2008. We played them every year since then, with the exception of last season when the game got canceled because of COVID-related reasons. We've played the Mustangs 12 times and have gone 5-7 and seven against them. As I just mentioned, we didn't play them last year, but in 2019, the last time that we played for a city, they beat us 42-40. to 40. As for this season, the Mustangs are struggling. They're coming in 2-5 and five on the season, 1-3 and three in conference. They're tied with Green County Tech for next to last in the 5A East. Nettleton is tied with Wynn for first. The Mustangs have lost conference games to Green County Tech by the score of 42-8. to eight. They got shut out by Valley View 37-0, and Batesville beat them 39-12. to 12. Last week, they defeated Paragool 20-14 in double overtime. You can bet they'd like to make it two in a row tonight against our Nettleton Raiders, but that is not going to be an easy task, Pally. The Raiders this season have demonstrated a devastating defense and a high octane offense and they ain't gonna go down without a significant fight it's the Raiders it's the Mustangs it's Friday night high school football and ain't nothing else like it when we come back we'll hear from the Raiders head coach Stephen Hampton don't touch that dial you're listening to the first National Bank pregame show on the EAB Sports Network
Put your daily office routines in the hands of people you can trust. Forest Office Machines, your authorized sharp document systems dealer in Jonesboro. That's right, since 1965, Forest Office Machines has provided dependable office equipment and reliable service. We've followed the equipment journey through all kinds of changes and developments, always on the cutting edge, whatever that is. And our partnership with Sharp Document Systems means we offer the very latest, most dependable equipment. And Forest is the only office equipment dealer that when you need supply, you can walk in our store and get it. And when you need it fixed, you can call us. This is Barry Forrest. My family's been taking care of equipment needs of businesses just like yours since 1965. I would love to work for you today. Put your daily office routines in the hands of people you can trust. Forest Office Machines, your authorized sharp document system dealer at 1005 G Street in Jonesboro. 932-7852. 932-7852. Call Forest Office Machines today. Last year, we were duck hunting in a pit. If you've ever hunted a duck pit, you know someone's responsible for pulling the top back before you shoot. A duck came over. We said, Danny, a good friend of mine, shoot that duck. Whoever's responsible for pulling the cover back didn't pull it back far enough. Danny hit his head hard. You don't get much sympathy, duck hunting. After a long silence, Kelly said, Danny, did you bend that steel top? There were several comments later. Glenn Sane, and God bless our troops. Trust your heart to better care at NEA Baptist. Better access means communication with your award-winning cardiac team anytime, anywhere with the MyChart app. Better technology means leading the state with new treatments and interventions right here in Jonesboro. Better is an integrated team of experts at your service when seconds matter. Your heart deserves better. Find it at NEA Baptist. We welcome you back to the First National Bank pregame show. We're here with Coach Stephen Hampton for our weekly pregame visit. Coach, before we talk about tonight's game with the Forest City Mustangs, let's recap the big win over Greene County Tech last week. You beat the Eagles 54-7 to and moved to 7-0 and on the season. Coach, the Raiders are rolling. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was really pleased with how well our guys came out and played. You know, obviously there was <laughs> the weather – uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. You never, never seen any wind kind of like that, you know. And it seemed like the the more the wind howled and blew, the the more energy our guys played with. And they, it, it was it was kind of neat. Uh, and uh, I was just pleased with the way they came out and played. Yeah, I saw things in that game last Friday night that I've never seen before. Balloons flying across the field, a punt that went over the punter's head and into the end zone after the roll. Kind of a uh, crazy uh, night there and a fake lightning um, strike that can't, that uh, postponed the game for a few minutes. It was, a, it was an eventful homecoming night. Yeah, it was. It was kind of a, a perfect storm. Uh, you know, in the first quarter, we, uh, we chose to take the football. We wanted the ball because we didn't know what the weather was going to do, whether it was going to rain, whatever. So we wanted to draw ball when we could get it. And then they chose to, to you know, take the wind in the second quarter <laughs> and so uh we got them pinned back you know we scored and got them pinned deep and you could you know they were one-dimensional you couldn't do anything throwing wise into that wind so uh you know by the end of the first quarter it was 22 nothing and uh, we kind of had them in a hole there and it just uh, uh kind of spiraled out, out of control for them uh you know because of it you had another huge night from your offense last week coach 54 points 408 yards, all in a turbo clock shortened game. Who all on the offense deserves a shout out from the coach? Well, our players of the week, uh, first of all, uh, Kobe Bradling. He had seven carries, 147 yards, three touchdowns, just ran the ball really well. Uh, and then our co offense player of the week was uh, Ryan Crawford, uh, our, our center. Uh, he was our highest graded offensive lineman, did a, did a really nice job. I love that. I think the offensive linemen are kind of the servant leaders of the team. They don't often get their names called out. It's great that Crawford won player of the week last week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those other guys, it's easy to recognize them. They're going to get the touchdowns, their names in the paper. Uh, but the offensive line, you know, they're down there doing the grunt work. And, uh, you know, without them, you know, those backs, receivers, quarterbacks, you know, wouldn't be able to do what they do. Coach, your defense was just dominant again last Friday. Who stood out to you on the defensive side of the ball? Well, I thought our front seven played, you know, unbelievable. I'll put it to you like this. We do our stats. Our secondary had one tackle. 
<laughs> they accounted for one tackle. That's because nobody made it that far, you know. And uh, they had 49 yards total offense, and they also had a 50 something yard run there at the end with our with our backups in. If that tells you anything. Uh, but Blake Brown was our player of the week. He had 12 total tackles, 10 of those solos, uh, three tackles for loss. Just just played played an outstanding game. Three first downs, I believe, 49 yards total offense, and that's after a 54-yard 54, 54 run. I mean, I guess I'm doing the math here in my head. Y'all had them negative yardage at that point. Yeah, they would have been negative yardage before, the, you know, that last play, and uh, we wanted to shut out. You know, our guys wanted that, but, uh, you know, ended up giving up a run there at the end. Uh, you know, guy got out of gap, and, you know, it just, just happened. But uh, overall, man, we, we played we played really, really well. Uh, like I said, especially our front seven uh, really dominated the game. We're here with Coach Stephen Hampton with our pregame visit. We've covered offense and defense. Coach, how pleased were you with your special team play last Friday? Uh, you know, I was pretty pleased. Uh, you know, with the win, the way it was, Kendrick McShann, he was our uh, special teams player of the week, kicked the ball really well. You know, the opening kickoff, he kicks out of the back of the end zone. Uh, you know, had other kicks that were all really good, uh, you know, and so – we were able to get other kickers some work, you know, on our, our extra point. Daniel Golden uh, made his first extra point of the year, and uh, he'll get more opportunities going forward. So uh, really pleased with our coverage team uh, and then how well we're kicking the ball right now. I noticed on the team Facebook page that y'all gave out a few more awards last week. Tell us about the Big Stick of the Week award winner, Q Thompson. Well, Big Stick, you know, we always look for, you know, big hit during the game. Uh, and, um, you know, this week, Q Thompson on kickoff cover there in the second half, he was one that we subbed in, got some starters off our kickoff coverage team, and he's one of the guys that got in on it and uh, went down and made some big hits there on the coverage team. The big baller player of the week was Jalen Scales. What exactly is the big baller player of the week? Well, the big baller uh, offense, that's our scout team offense. They're the big ballers. You know, they, they're the ones that give us a look every week for our starting defense. And so Jalen Scales, uh, you know, he, he ran running back. Uh, receiver did kind of a little bit of everything over there for us, uh, giving us a great look. And so he was our big baller player of the week. Congratulations to Jalen. And the Steel Curtain player of the week is Jacob Linderman. Now, as an old Dallas Cowboys fan, I don't like to hear about the Steel Curtain, but I do like Jacob Linderman. What did Jacob do to win that award? Well, just like big ballers, you know, the Steel Curtain is our scout team defense. Those guys are the ones that run, you know, our opponent's uh, defense for the week and give our offense a good look. And Jacob Linderman uh, was our Steel Curtain player of the week. Congratulations to all those guys. Coach Sinatra team has taken on the Forest City Mustangs. What do you know about the Mustangs this season? Well, I mean, you know, they're, they've got some really good athletes. You know, they always do. Uh, you know, they've struggled a little bit. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, having, having a tough year. But, uh, you know, as far as uh, athletes and guys that can make plays, dang, you know, speed, uh, you know, you, they got guys that can go. And so you have to make sure that, that we line up correctly. You know, they've shown that they're going to line up in some odd formations at times. Uh, you know, and if you don't line up correctly, it could hurt you. Um, and, and so, but at the same time, it's a chance to make some big plays uh, on, our, on our end if we, can, if we can play our assignment. And so we just got to make sure we, we account for everything and, and just play sound football, you know, on defense and then offensively, you know, control the line of scrimmage, run the football, and that's going to open everything else up. Coach, how are we doing health-wise? Man, we're we're at as far as this point in the year, you know, we're as healthy as as you know you can be. You got your normal bumps and bruises that you get, uh, but you know everybody is 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 good to go this week as far as being able to play, um, and so you know feel good about that. Uh, you know it's getting that time of year. You know we just got to go. You got to grind through it, and uh, you know our guys are doing that. Just a couple more questions with Coach Stephen Hampton, Coach. The wisest mortal man to ever walk this planet wrote a book. It's called the Book of Proverbs. And one of the things that wise King Solomon said in that book was this, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Your team is 7-0 and and has just been rolling over people. It'd be real easy for them to get arrogant. How, as a coach, do you go about trying to keep them humble? Well, you know, we, we point out, you know, we're able to go back and, and – 
pull out plays from film, um, you know, things that we're not, you know, even though we may be winning that we're not doing necessarily correct, um, you know, plays that, that we need to fix, uh, whether that's a technique, whether that's being in the right gap, uh, because, you know, sometimes those things can go unnoticed uh, because, you know, it doesn't show up, you know. But we know that, that we have to get those things fixed, you know, because to get to where we want to be, um, you know, we, we've got to be sound in all phases of the game. Um, and, and then that, we talk about playing to a standard. doesn't matter who we, who we play. We're playing a faceless opponent. It's about a standard of football, of effort, uh, execution, and then expecting to win. I like the way that you phrase it. We were one and zero last week. Let's be one and zero this week. That's it. That's uh, we talk about it every Monday, you know, and uh, no different this week. Um, our mentality is to have a one and zero mindset. What it, you know, nothing else matters but to be one and zero after Friday night. Coach, one more question. Let's talk keys to victory. What are y'all gonna have to do to be one and zero tonight? Well, I think the things we just talked about. Um, don't be sloppy. You know, don't come out. You know, don't have foolish penalties, pre, you know, pre-snap penalties uh, that can hurt drives. Just go out and execute, play with great effort. And, and if we do those things, protect the football, um, you know, we'll have a great chance to win. Let's go make it happen. Thank you for your time, Coach. Let's go get a win for Raider Nation. Let's do it. Go Raiders. Raider pride, brother. You've been told banks with branches don't have the digital capabilities you need. But why not have the best of both worlds? At First National Bank, we have all the online banking tools you could ever need. Plus, if you need something, we have real people in real places near you. Digital, with branches, and real people. We know you can't be everywhere at once, but we can be anywhere you are. Check it, snap it, track it, pay it, move it, and ask it anywhere. First National Bank, putting you first, always. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Yeah. See Placid Tire Service for the right tire at the right price right now. Placid Tire Service is the area's biggest selection of in-stock tires at the lowest price. While others are searching for tires to order, we'll get you fixed up with a great set of tires and back on the road in no time with our four tires, one hour guarantee. Plus, we make the purchase easy on your budget with our Placid Tire Service card or no credit needed financing options. For the right tire at the right price right now, the choice is easy. That's Placid Tire Service. It's football time at Wings to Go. That means all the TVs watching the game, all the wings will be hot and flavorful, all the food will be good. It is time to come to Wings to Go. We've weathered the storm. It's almost over. Things are getting better, and we can't wait to see you at Wings to Go. Sports, wings, football, life is great. At Wings to Go, both locations. Guys, if you haven't made it into Orville's Men's Store, then you're missing out. They're the only store in town to exclusively carry brands like Barber, Duckhead, Strong Suit, Tommy Bahama, and Vineyard Vines. Orville's has everything a guy needs, from daily workwear to a big night out on the town. Orville's will have you looking more stylish and feeling more confident than ever before. So make your way to Orville's Men's Store at 2612 East Nettleton next to Steamroller Blues in Jonesboro and show off your stash. Shop online at Orville'sMS.com. And we welcome you back to the First National Bank pregame show where we're just about nine minutes away from kickoff here as Nettleton will be taking, over, taking on Forest City tonight in Conference 5A East action going to tell you about the starting lineup here for the Raiders. We'll start on the offensive side. Number nine, the quarterback, Cameron Scarlett, starting behind center. And Andy, Cameron is just having one incredible season. He really is. And I think anybody that has watched his progression through high school kind of expected this because that's what kind of individual he is and the, and the potential he had to have a really, really good season. Uh, making good decisions, taking care of the football. Uh, he, he recently has been, you know, featured as one of the top quarterbacks in the state of Arkansas. There was a article about him uh, this past week. Uh, he's put up some pretty strong numbers statewide. You know, almost 1,600 yards total offense, uh, accounting for a total of 21 touchdowns. I mean, that's putting a, bo a bunch of points on the board at the high school level. And we're not even through a little over, you know, maybe a little over halfway through the season. But certainly taking care of the football, putting points on the board, that's a great uh, formula for a senior quarterback. It really is. I, I appreciate the balance that he brings. He truly is a dual threat who can beat you with his arm and his legs. Looking at those 21 touchdowns, which, first of all, that's phenomenal. 
eight games in or seven games in, uh, 21 touchdowns. I'm doing the math in my head thanks to the great Jim McDaniel, a man who you and I both were greatly influenced by. But that's three touchdowns a game. 13 of them uh, uh, of the 21 have been through the air and eight of them on the ground. A lot of ways that Cameron Scarlett can beat you. Yeah, you know, you talk about that, but but on the other side of the thing, and I'm sure Coach Hampton will talk to you about it, he takes care of the football. I mean, that's what you want. You, you, you know, he, he talks a lot about, you know, taking care of the football, and when you're a good team, you're going to put points on the board. You just can't give the ball – you put can't put the ball on the floor and give the, the other team a chance. And so that, that really is the complete uh, package as a quarterback. He's joined in the backfield by Kobe Bradley, who's also having a phenomenal season. Kobe has 889 yards on the season, just 111 yards away from eclipsing that 1,000-yard mark. He scored 10 touchdowns, and he is having a, uh, a heck of a season himself, Kobe Bradley. Uh, the receivers, I have been very impressed by the complement of receivers that Scarlett is throwing to this year. We'll start off with the tight end, DJ Willis. Young man is really coming to his own this year. Had a big season. The leading receiver is Jaden Brown, downtown Jaden Brown. 20 catches on the year, 403 yards, four touchdowns. That nine to eight combination has been fun to watch this year. It really has. You know, we talked about the athleticism of Jaden Brown and his ability to go compete for the football on some of these 50-50 uh, balls. Uh, one of the things that I'll talk to you about is the fact that Cameron Scarlett's uh, – uh, he's thrown for I think almost uh, you know seven or eight hundred yards, and only half of those have gone to one person. So they're going, you know, he's spreading it around to other people. And you talked about, uh, you know, you, there's probably four or five different uh, wide receivers that have contributed to to the offense this year. And one of the guys that have really contributed is Ken Warren McShann, whose father is a proud alumnus of Forest City. Ken Warren McShann and Ken Warren McShann Jr. He's the one we'll see tonight. We are number 26, but he has five touchdowns on the season. He leads the team in receiving touchdowns, and he's getting the start tonight, as is Braylon King. It's good to be the king. It's good to be Braylon King. He's getting the start at wide out. The offensive line for the Raiders tonight will start with left tackle, number 79, Allen Campbell. Number 70, Kylan Gates starts at left guard. The center is Ryan Crawford. And as you heard on the interview with Coach Hampton, he was named the player of the week, the offensive player of the week last week, uh, along with Kobe Bradley. Starting at right guard tonight is number 55, Kobe Brad, uh, excuse me, Kobe Miller. Can't believe I got that last name wrong. Kobe Miller. And the right tackle is number 71, Big Moses Williams. That is the offensive line. All told, there's three juniors starting and eight seniors starting. And those eight seniors, huge reason why the Raiders are, uh, have a chance of moving to 8-0 and tonight. The starters for the defense will start on the defensive line. Um, Jorge Salas, the uh, senior captain of the team. Nose guard Cam Phillips. Jordan Pegram also getting the start, and of course he's getting the start. He leads the team in 15 tackles for losses. Also need to say Javante Wallace is going to be uh, starting tonight on the defensive line. Javante is just really uh, come up big for the Raiders. Two sacks on the year, nine tackles for losses. Javante is a full-grown man on the defensive line, and you can bet we'll be calling Javante Wallace's name a lot. And really, uh, Andy, as you know, uh, collegiate football player, um, this game is won at the line of scrimmage, and that defensive line has been good all season. It really has. We, you know, we have 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 talked a lot about how physical they play and and uh, hold up the offensive line that they play against and and, and sustain their gaps, and it allows the linebacking crew of ne of Nettleton to be able to just run all over the field and make tackles. And I know we're about to talk about that linebacking crew here next. And it's been a good one for sure. The inside linebackers, Blake Brown. Orion Pugh, Jamie Morris. Blake Brown has had just a phenomenal season. Uh, 74 tackles, three sacks. Blake is just, he's all over the place out there. Just a very, very key part of this team. Orion Pugh, 32 tackles and three sacks. And the, line, the inside linebackers have, have really played well for the Raiders this year. And as Andy mentioned, a lot of that uh, credit goes to the defensive line who handles their business so the linebackers can make plays. Yeah, really, it's the same. It's that kind of sen sentiment that you talk about on the offensive side of the ball whenever you have your big playmakers that can get, 
get their work done and score and get out there in, in open space, well, you got to turn around and tip your hat to the offensive line to make that happen. Linebackers are the same way. <laughs> Hey, you, you thank all those defensive linemen for playing physical, holding their gaps up, and keeping people off of you so you can do your job. And, and Nettleton, all season long, has allowed these linebackers to run all over the field and make all these tackles. Playing outside linebacker for the Raiders, number 11, Halon Willie, and number 27, Curtez Smith. Curtez is also the backup quarterback, and, man, he has done a phenomenal job, uh, which, of course, over the last few weeks, Nettleton has – has been turbo clocking people, so the second team has been in a lot during the second half. And to be honest with you, Andy, it's not just a huge drop off whenever Curtis Smith goes out there playing quarterback for the Raiders. He has done a really good job. Y yeah, seasons like this, whenever you're having some uh, uh, some games get out of hand, uh, a positive is that you get uh, more people involved and get them experience because you, you know, if you're trying to create a legacy of football. You know, it just uh, your upperclassmen getting a chance to play all the time. Uh, that kind of uh, is problematic a as the next season goes on. You want some uh, uh, seniors and juniors and sophomores getting real playing time on the field. Coin toss is going on, and while we watch to see who won the coin toss and what they elected to do, we'll tell you about the defensive secondary. It looks like Nettleton has won the coin toss, and they've elected to receive the opening kickoff, so the offense will be taking the field first if everything goes right on the kickoff. The uh, secondary, defensive secondary, uh, Markel and Barber, one of the team captains, he starts at cornerback, as does Juan Badillo, who leads the team with two interceptions. And the safety, number six, Dorian Tucker, who led the team in tackles last year. Thankfully, the safety is not leading the team in tackles this year. Well, I'll tell you, I've bragged on this these three kids uh, over the last month or so and how fundamentally sound they are playing football and they're playing wide receivers really well using their hips, you know, reading quarterbacks. And they're not giving a whole lot up as far as the passing yards or anywhere to throw the football. And I, I would kind of have to put my take my hat off to Coach Allen Johnson and how he's coached these young athletes up. And not only, uh, you know, how to play physical as secondary, but sometimes you have to understand the mentality of, of playing the secondary too and, and understand what a quarterback and a wide receiver is trying to do to you. And these kids are playing next level secondary for Nettleton. And you mentioned a, a name that deserves an awful lot of credit for the Raiders' success this year, and that is Coach Allen Johnson. He uh, coached at Arkansas State last year, and of course there was a, a coaching staff change at Arkansas State. And, and uh, Coach, um, I know, had, has had the opportunity to uh, coach numerous places on the college level. He's an in-demand coach, but he's taking care of his mom. And um, we're thankful that he's staying in Jonesboro, taking care of his mother, and coaching at Nettleton. Man, what a great job Alan Johnson has done for us. And he is, uh, his Raiders are out there. The kickoff return team, Nettleton wearing all white with gold helmets, looking sharp tonight. Forest City, they are in their all blue. And we are just about to get things underway here at Sam Smith Stadium. Beautiful turf, beautiful scoreboard with a video replay uh, uh, capability. Uh, it's just a great night for football, Andy. It's, uh, by my watch, it's 63 degrees and clear. Not great night for football. Keys to victory. Do you want to say them real quick before we uh, well, have a kickoff? Well, off? I, I was just thinking that Nettleton – uh, needs to play sound defense and tackle. You know, Forest City's got some athletes on that side of the football. I'm going to be watching Nettleton's defense tonight to make sure that they make tackles and don't let, don't let big plays slip up tonight because if Nettleton tackles people, they, they're going to do just fine tonight because their offense should be just fine. So all eyes are going to be on the defense and see how well they tackle tonight. We're just about set to kick off Forest City with the – Kind of a shallow kick. It's fielded at the 35-yard line, and it is advanced to the 42. And that is number 89 on the return. That's the best jersey number ever. That's Caleb Tedder on the return, one of the uh, the up men in the in the uh, defensive return. But it was a shallow kick. I guess they're trying to keep it away from downtown Jaden Brown and Keandre Pope. The Raiders will take over a good field position. Actually, it's on the 43-yard line. First and 10 for the Raiders at the 43. Kobe Bradley in the backfield with the All-State quarterback, Cameron Scarlett. Gives to Kobe Bradley, running left side, has a hole, has room. He's across the midfield 
Tackled at the 35-yard line. Big run by Kobe Bradley. First down Raiders. Good way to start, Andy. Yeah, great job by the offensive line there. A uh, little kick out block to the left side, and Kobe Bradley hadn't didn't have anybody touch him until he hit the free safety. So you certainly got to turn around and give your uh, high fives to your offensive lineman there on the left side. Yeah, Alan Campbell, Kylan Gates, Ryan Crawford, the center. Nice job over there by that left side. First down and 10 on the 35. Scarlett's going to pass. It is complete to D.J. Willis. D.J. Willis is tackled at the 25-yard line, close to the first down, depending upon the spot, and I believe it is going to be a first down. We'll call it a gain of 11 for D.J. Willis after the pass from Scarlett. I had talked about him early in the season. He's somebody I didn't know about, but I will tell you in pads and how he moves and ability to block, but also catch the football and run with the football. I'm very impressed by this mm -hmm. kid. And I think, you know, as he continues to get stronger, he has a chance to play at the next level. 6'2", 240, can run, can catch. D.J. Willis is a threat on this team. He's in motion, lined up in the slot back. Scarlett gives to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley looking for room to run right up the middle. And he is stood up at the 20-yard line. It's going to be a gain of about four, second down and six for the Raiders on the Mustang 20. Yeah, Nettleton, uh, like I, I, I've talked about before, the first 10, 10 plays are a lot of times scripted because you want to see how the defense is going to line up. So uh, be curious to see, you know, if we're going to be passing the ball, running the ball down here. But uh, they're gonna, you're going to see it mixed up in these first 10 plays. Scarlett gives to Kobe Bradley, running right side. He's at the 10. He's at the 5, fighting for the end zone, but he is – Suplex at the five-yard line, fumble on the play, but the whistle had already blown, so it's going to be first down and goal to go for the Raiders at the five after another big run by Kobe Bradley. Well, I'll tell you, let's call uh, you know, call an offensive line again, 79. Alan Campbell's down. He's seven to nine yards down the field throwing blocks. Uh, yep. So our already here, offensive line for Nettleton setting the tone for this game, and I love to see that. First down and goal to go for the Raiders on the five-yard line. We're scoreless here in the first quarter, first possession of the game. The clock's at 9.45. Scarlett and Bradley in the backfield. In motion is D.J. Willis. He's lined up now left side on the slot. In motion is Braylon King. Cameron Scarlett running left side, fighting through one tackle, but he is brought down at the, looks like the four-yard line. Going to be a gain of one, second down and goal to go from the four. Well, that's some tough running by Cameron Scarlett. Once again, old quarterback. I just don't like seeing quarterbacks out there running. But I'm telling you, he can do it. He can do it. That's, his, that's part of his play. Maybe the toughest kid on the field for sure. Second down and goal to go for the Raiders. Whistle is blown. I believe it might be encroachment against Forest City. Let's see what the referee says. Yes, it's going to be offsides against Forest City. That will be half the distance to the goal. And it should be second down and goal to go from the two. Scarlett in the backfield, in the shotgun. Raiders always go from the shotgun with that spread offense. Give to Kobe Bradley right up the middle, into the end zone. Touchdown, Kobe Bradley. Touchdown, Raiders with 8.51 to play in the first quarter. The Raiders strike first blood. Boy, that, there wasn't much to that play. Uh, offensive line kind of removing some people, but uh, Forest City not playing very physical up on their defensive line, and they're, you know all of their, them are already in the end zone. You know, that's one of the things that you talked about is, is is defense. You don't want to be in the end zone because, I mean, that's you're already behind. A little swing and gate type formation for the PAT. Daniel Golden is the man who is kicking the PAT tonight. The hold by Ken Warren McShann is good. The kick is up and plenty good. Splits the uprights, and the score is 7 to nothing after the Daniel Golden PAT. The man started off the season, Andy, up here in the booth with us, Daniel Golden was the director of the live stream in week uh, zero at Blyville, and now then he's out there with a helmet on, with pads on, kicking uh, field goals. How about that? Wasn't there a movie kind of about this with, uh, is it called In Invincible or whatever, where he tried out for the Jets and ended up being a wide receiver and that kind of stuff? Uh, the I think it was Mark the Wahlberg or that's whatever. That's right, Marky Mark. We have a, we have a movie in the making that's right, right here. <laughs> It's like With a the golden boy. The golden boy who is a legacy. His older brother, Michael Golden, is kicking the ball at the Naval Academy for their sprint team. And, uh, boy, he was a dandy. And his younger brother carrying on the golden legacy for sure. So 7 to nothing the score with 8.51 remaining in the first quarter. 
Kendrick McShan to kick off for the Raiders. There's a little razzle-dazzle on the kick. It's an onside kick, and, and it's recovered by Forest City. Like Joseph Newhung had a shot at it, but it was recovered by Forest City, and they're going to have good field position. That's Octavian Washington who recovered it. Ball on the 49. Nettleton with uh, trying a little, little trickeration out there early. Well, well, when you have confidence in your defense, you can make calls like that. And Steve Hampton absolutely has the most utmost confidence in his defense to take risks like that and knows that they're going to go out there and play physical football and shut down Forest City. So that's what you're banking on. First and 10 at the 47 now for Forest City. They are moving from right to left on your radio dial. They're lined up in the old I formation. Quarterback gives to the tailback, runs right up the middle where he is met by Javante Wallace. Wallace throws him back, but – Forward progress, a gain of two, going to be second down and eight. Yeah, he, he, Javante just plays physical football. And if you don't put a hat on him, he's going to wreak havoc in the backfield. And you can't just put one hand on him. That's not going to be sufficient. So great job setting the tone right there as a negative play. Second down and eight for Forest City. The ball on their own 49-yard line. Hard to see the quarterback's jersey number. He's got his shirt raised up. Give again to the tailback, and he bounces out to the left side, tripped up by Jamie Morris, falls forward and gains a couple of yards. It's going to be third down and five for Forest City. Well, here's your chance defense. I mean, this is what Coach Hampton's uh, banking on for taking risks like an onside kick that the defense will come out here and throw a shutout in the first series. I believe that's Javante Flanoy who's playing quarterback for Forest City tonight. Number six is actually it's number number five is Cameron Tiswell. Like we said, he's got his shirt pulled up where it's kind of hard to see his jersey number. It is six. So third down and five for the Mustangs. A give to the tailback, and he moves the pile forward close to the first down, but I believe he's going to be about a yard short. It'll be fourth down and one for Forest City. Let's see if the Mustangs elect to go for it here. The ball on the Nettleton 45-yard line, 44-yard line. But we do have a couple of blue jerseys down, a couple of Mustangs that are on the turf. Number 50 is one of them. He's up, and he's walking off the field. The other one is number 52. That is... Jacoby Shell, and he is up and walking off the field on his own power as well. So a nice applause from the Mustang faithful over here. And fourth down and one for Forest City as the injured players make their way to the sideline. Seven ten remaining in the first quarter. The score is Nettleton seven, Forest City zero. A little bit of confusion over here on the Forest City sideline as they're trying. They had a couple of injured players come out. Now then they they think they've got the right personnel on the field. A couple of more run out. So they let you play with 11. And that's what they got out there on the field. Fourth down and one. Let's see if the Mustangs are going for it or if they're going to punt. Looks like they are planning on going for it. The quarterback is Flanoy. I formation. And the play is whistled dead before it even got started. And I believe it's going to be a timeout for Forest City. We'll take that timeout with them. We'll take a 30-second break, and we'll have more Raider football when we come back after a 30-second break. You are listening to the Raider football broadcast on 94.1, watching it on Nettleton Television on YouTube. We're sure glad to have you with us on this Friday night. We'll be right back after 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV. You've been told banks with branches don't have the digital capabilities you need. But why not have the best of both worlds? At First National Bank, we have all the online banking tools you could ever need. Plus, if you need something, we have real people in real places near you. Digital, with branches, and real people. We know you can't be everywhere at once, but we can be anywhere you are. Check it, snap it, track it, pay it, move it, and ask it anywhere. First National Bank, putting you first, always. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. 
And we welcome you back to Sam Smith Stadium. The, we are here at the the NEA Baptist broadcasting position at Sam Smith Stadium. Get better with Baptist, where the Nettleton Raiders lead Forest City seven to nothing. Seven minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first quarter. Forest City has the ball on the Nettleton 44-yard line. It's fourth down and one, and the Mustangs electing to go for it. Flonoy, the quarterback, he is joining the backfield. A uh, fullback and a tailback. We'll get you their names when they run the ball. Nettleton with three down linemen. Fourth down and one. Quarterback sneak right up the middle, and he has stopped. Lad, let's see what the spot is. It sure looks like he did not get it. Let's see what that, where are they spotted. The Nettleton defensive line, I believe they did hold, Andy, and that is going to be a turnover on downs. First down, Raiders. Uh, I don't know if they're going to end up measuring this. Oh, they're going to turn it around. Yep, referees, yep. He's, it was close. He did get a little bit of a shove, but the Nettleton defensive line, as they've done all season long, hanging tough. Yeah, that was two gambles, really, by uh, coaching back-to-back -back there. You, you know, Nettleton going for the onside kick and trusting their defense, and then Forest City, you know, that's a bit of a gamble, too, if you want to go up against Nettleton's defense right here at the halfway in the <laughs> middle of the field and, you know, go for it for fourth down. I mean, Nettleton has proven they're a pretty dead gum strong defense. Their offensive unit on the field right now, Cameron Scarlett in the backfield with him is Kobe Bradley. Give to Bradley. Bradley running left side, finds a hole. He shoots up the middle. He has got plenty of yardage for the first down. He's tackled at the 31-yard line. Big gain for Kobe Bradley. First down, Raiders. Boy, I like the way he runs the football. He has a little bit of hesitation whenever he does it. It's kind of a flow and then cut back. And when he cuts, he's gone. It's I mean, a burst. They, he, he puts his foot in the ground and he takes off. You know, it reminds me of kind of, um, what is it, the Henry? Hit Der is it Derrick Henry? What Derrick Henry for the man, Titans. He just takes off. Yep. Big gain there, and the Raiders are in business. First and 10 on the 32-yard line of the Mustangs. Scarlett from the gun. Receives the snap, gives it again to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley bounces out left side. He's across the 25, has the first down, the 20, the 15, pushed out of bounds at the 13-yard line of the Mustangs. Another big gain for Kobe Bradley, and he is – something tells me he's smelling that 1,000-yard yeah, mark. Yeah, I, I, Craig, I was going to talk – when you were talking about stats before the game, I looked at that 889, and I thought, hmm, that's awful close to 1,000 yep. yards. Uh, man, well, how cool would it be to see him uh, click that over tonight? I would say he is getting close to it right now. First down and 10 for the Raiders on the 17-yard line of the Mustangs. Again, they give to Bradley. Bradley running left side. He is shoved out of bounds inside the 10-yard line at the 8. So it's going to be a gain of 5 for Bradley. Second down and 5 for the Raiders. Well, Nettleton's offense certainly looks like they are uh, comfortable tonight and also executing, uh, and those are two really, really potent uh, adjectives for an offense. Second down and five for the Raiders, the ball on the Forest City Mustang eight-yard line. Hard count by Scarlett trying to draw the Mustang front off sides. They hold what they got. I wouldn't Scar be surprised to see them go up top here with Jaden Brown. This time Scarlett's going to be a quarterback keeper, and he is into the end zone. Another touchdown for Cameron Scarlett. Touchdown, Raiders. Well, they're certainly making it uh, quick work of uh, Forest City here in the first quarter, uh, not only executing but playing very, very physical and fast offense. And I'm not sure Forest City's ready for uh, Nettleton tonight. Nettleton with uh, another – and you help me, Andy. It's like a swinging gate type uh, formation that they – showed before the PAT. Daniel Golden on to kick the point after. It's high enough, it's deep enough, and it is right through the uprights. Daniel Golden with his second PAT of the night makes the score 14 to nothing Raiders. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout, and we'll have more Raider football on the EEB Sports Network when we come back. Last year, we were duck hunting in a pit. If you've ever hunted a duck pit, you know someone's responsible for pulling the top back before you shoot. A duck came over. We said, Danny, a good friend of mine, shoot that duck. Whoever's responsible for pulling the cover back didn't pull it back far enough. Danny hit his head hard. You don't get much sympathy, duck honey. After a long silence, Kelly said, Danny, did you bend that steel top? There were several comments later. 
Go ahead and sign, and God bless our troops. And we welcome you back to the, the NEA broadcast position here at Sam Smith Stadium. Get better with Baptist. We'll call that the Kavanaugh Auto Group's drive of the game. Made the score 14 to nothing. Kavanaugh Auto Groups to see their complete inventory from the comfort of your home. Log on to KavanaughCars.com, and we appreciate the Kavanaugh Auto Group sponsoring the drive of the night. Kendrick McShan on to kick off the ball on the right hash. McShan booms it to the 23-yard line where it is fielded by the Mustangs, running straight up that left hash the crowd the uh, crowd moving forward and he is brought down shy of the 40 yard line by about two yards to the 38 that's number five on the return Cameron Tiswell so good field position for the Mustangs they trail the Raiders 14 to nothing with five minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Middleton has had the ball two times on offense. They've scored two times. Kobe Bradley has a touchdown. Cameron Scarlett has a touchdown. That's the 11th touchdown of the year for Kobe Bradley, and it's the 22nd touchdown of the year for Cameron Scarlett. Wow. That's lighting the scoreboard up, Greg. Yes, it is. It sure is. I don't is. know if I had 22 touchdowns my entire high school career. <laughs> and you had a you had a dang good high school <laughs> career. That's I mean, this, these guys are really turning in some kind of senior season. Forest City elects to call a timeout to talk things over, and we will take that timeout with them. With 5:52 remaining in the first quarter, your score is Nettleton 14, Forest City zero. You've tuned in to Raider football on the EAB Sports Network. Guys, if you haven't made it into Orville's Men's Store, then you're missing out. They're the only store in town to exclusively carry brands like Barber, Duckhead, Strong Suit, Tommy Bahama, and Vineyard Vines. Orville's has everything a guy needs, from daily workwear to a big night out on the town. Orville's will have you looking more stylish and feeling more confident than ever before. So make your way to Orville's Men's Store at 2612 East Nettleton, next to Steamroller Blues in Jonesboro, and show off your stash. Shop online at Orville'sMS.com. Beautiful night for high school football here at Sam Smith Stadium in Forest City, Arkansas. Sure glad to have you spending your Friday night with us. How is everybody doing in Raider Nation? Pretty good crowd here. Nettleton folks have made the trip, and they have liked what they've seen so far as Nettleton enjoying a two-touchdown lead after two possessions over Forest City. Forest City will start this drive moving right to left on your radio dial at their own 38-yard line. Mustangs in an I formation. Gives the ball to the tailback, runs up the middle. He's got some running room. He's across midfield, tackled by Dorian Tucker, but not before he gets a first down. Yeah, that was a nice piece of running there by Forest City running back, and had a, had a, ni had a nice hole with a lead blocker. But w let's go back to what I was talking about. I, what I'm going to watch tonight is see if we tackle people, and that's exactly – you see Dorian Tucker met him in the hole. Yes, it was about eight or nine yards deep, but that was a one-on-one -on -one tackle, and those are the impressive tackles to me when you don't have to have your entire team for help. That was a great tackle by Dorian Tucker. Good open field tackle by the Raiders safety. First down and 10 for the Mustangs. They are in Nettleton territory. The ball at the Raider 48 yard line. Again to the tailback and this time he is hit immediately by Nettleton's number 22 and that's Jamie Morris. Short gain. Second down and nine for the Mustangs. Good tackle by Jamie Morris. Yeah, Courtney Austin running back for um, Forest City is a very good athlete, and he's got very nice feet. He's quick, and he can run. And those are the kind of guys that you don't want to allow them to get going and hitting them before they get going, uh, uh, just like Jamie Morris did. That's what you want. We're going to have to hit him in the backfield. He's quick. Second down and nine for the Mustangs. They're running the I formation. And a fumble. And there's Blake Brown and Jordan Pegram immediately hitting the ball carrier in the backfield. Another tackle for loss for Blake Brown. And that's going to be a loss of They're actually going to call him down because he went to get the ball. 
and he kneeled down to get the ball. The, the white hat called him down. Okay, so not as bad as it could have been yeah. for the Mustangs. Still a loss on the play. It's going to be third down, and we'll call it third down and 13 for the Mustangs. How similar to a play we had earlier in the year was there a punter that downed the ball, you know, he reached down and his knee was down and right. so the ball was dead right there. That's right. That's what happened right there to the quarterback. So third down and 13 for the Mustangs. Blake Brown with another tackle for loss. Gives to the tailback, running left side and he is hit by Orion Pugh and Halon Willie. After a gain of three, it's going to be fourth down and ten for the Mustangs, and something tells me this time they're going to punt the ball, Andy. Yeah, I, I, I want to go back to this linebacker play and O'Ryan meeting him, in, you know, about you know two yards deep there, but the physicality in which these kids are playing is pretty impressive. I mean, they, the, there's not any soft tackling. Uh, you, if you were down there, they'd have probably broken you in half. <laughs> uh, but O'Ryan, I mean, he brings it. I mean, he, when when he hits people, and you don't you don't forget that when you're on the other side, you're like, no. holy cow! When I come through, they're gonna they're gonna hit me. We will make them remember forever the night they played the Raiders. Punt is fielded by Keandre Pope at the twenty. Actually, that's Mark Ellen Barber at the twenty. Mark Ellen running left side, looking for the edge. He's got it. Mark Ellen with a pretty nice return right there. He's brought down at the about the 37-yard line, it looks like. So we'll call it a 17, maybe an 18-yard return for Mark Ellen Barber. I like to see that. You don't see that very often in high school football these days. A good old-fashioned punt return. Mark Ellen did a good job right yeah, there. Yeah, usually you don't have – I mean, in, in high school, it's not common to have really good punters that can put the ball up in the air. A lot of times it's rugby style or what have you. And it's an, uh, your punting is an afterthought, but uh, every once in a while you get to send one back. First and ten for the Raiders at their own 37. This is their third drive of the night. First two ended in touchdowns. They lead the game 14 to nothing. Scarlett to pass, and he had a man open. They overthrew downtown Jaden Brown down around the Mustang 40-yard line. Incomplete pass. It's going to be second down and ten. Yeah, he waited just a little too long for that. There's going to be a window because he had a free safety sitting over the top of that. Uh, that is a – what we call a fit throw. You got to fit it in there in between the two, and he got to pull the trigger a little faster on that one. That's going to be a window throw for him. Second down and 10 for the Raiders, who've primarily kept the ball on the ground in this game, but they throw it on first down. Cameron Scarlett is going to run on second down and 10, and he is tackled after a short gain, a gain of one. It's going to be third down and nine. I really don't think Nettleton's going to have any problems throwing the football tonight. I think Cameron can probably just line up and throw it all over the field. But, once again, that's not really what Nettleton's about. They're a balanced offensive attack. It is a passing down right now, you would think. Third down and nine. Scarlett in the gun. Kobe Bradley in the backfield with him. He is looking to throw. Throws downfield and overthrows Ken Warren McShann. And it's going to be fourth down and nine for the Raiders. And... Nettleton, three and out for the first time tonight. Well, uh, we're, we'll find out if they're going <laughs> to go say three and out. I say we, three and out. They may go to fourth down here. They may do it. It's uh, The ball is on the Nettleton 37-yard line. And Nettleton is lined up like they're going for it. I believe they're just trying to get a Mustangs to jump off sides. Now then Scarlett's going to back up a couple of yards and – I believe it's going to be one of those quick kicks. It sure is, and gets the ball off, and not a very uh, deep punt at all. Goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So, Andy, maybe you can do the math in your head. I say 38-yard line. They actually mark it at the 43-yard line. In any event, Four City is going to have good starting field position here. 2.05 remaining in the first quarter. Nettleton 14, Four City 0. Yeah, we, you know, Nettleton's success tonight has been on the, the ground, and I, I really think that Cameron can line up and throw the football tonight. Um, but he hasn't been able to so far. He's only thrown he's one, you know, he's thrown one pass to DJ and caught the ball on the flats there. It was a nice pass. Uh, but, you know, one of, one of the things, even as a Forest City defense that's not really disciplined, if they have good athletes and they play man-to-man, -man, it still creates some problems for the quarterback. And I think that's what the Forest City's playing man under right now. Raider sidelines chanting defense, trying to encourage the starters out there. Play is whistled dead. Flag hits the field. Let's see what the call I is. I think it's going to be a alignment issue for Four City. 
Actually, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, Their wide receiver is not on the line of scrimmage. I believe he was lined up in the neutral zone. So yeah. offsides is the call against the offense. It should be first down and 15. The chain gang is uh, moving with the down marker. Let's see if they can't get that straightened out over there. Should be first down and 15, yeah, I Andy. I think he's fixing to correct it right now. He called timeout. Yeah, officials timeout to set the chains. God bless the guys that do the chains at these games. Uh, any athletic director in the state of Arkansas will tell you it ain't easy to find guys that are willing to run the chain gang. So definitely appreciate the hard work those guys are doing down there. They've got the chains straightened out. It's going to be first down and 15 for Forest City. The ball on their own 38-yard line. Again, the old I formation, which is what we ran back when I played football, Andy, the I formation. Give to the tailback, runs straight up the chute. He bounces outside, has some room to run. He's across the 50-yard line, and he is shoved out of bounds by Juan Badillo, but I believe he's got a first down. There is a flag uh, behind the play, and e. Kylan Butler and big number 52 for Forest City. It's going to be uh, – what did you see there, Andy? I think we're probably going to have an unsportsmanlike – like a little extracurricular activity. Unsportsmanlike conduct, the, the penalty is called against the Mustangs. Uh, e. Kylan Butler and number 52 for Forest City, that's Jacoby Shell. Looked like they were locked up in uh, some extracurricular activity. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a big 15-yard penalty that negated a nice run for the Mustangs. So it is going to be first down and a literal country mile for Forest City way back at their own 22-yard line. Yeah, and, and it really didn't have anything to do with the play. That was an unfortunate situation for Forest City. They had a positive play. Running right. back made a nice move. And completely away from the play, there were some extracurricular, like you said, activity going on negated. That, that was a big blow to Forest City that needed a little momentum. It's going to be first down and more than 30 yards, and the Mustangs are going to throw. Boy, they air it out going deep. Throwing in the double coverage is intercepted by Dorian Tucker at the 40-yard line. He's across the 50, the 40, the 30, the 25, the 20, looking for a crease. He is shoved out of bounds at the 11-yard line. There is a flag on the play, but what a play, an interception by Dorian Tucker, and he returns it all the way down close to the 10-yard line of the Mustangs. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a flag on the play. We're going to have to see what's going on here. And then, unfortunately, Blake Brown got hit pretty hard on that return right there by one of the offensive line by uh, Four City, and the athletic trainer is going to have to see to Blake Brown. He got, that's he that's got actually hit, Jamie Morris. Uh, Jamie Morris, sorry. Yeah. He got hit pretty hard there on that return. So checking him out, now we got to figure out what that flag was thrown here and whether or not that's in the gate or add on to. Thrown way back here, uh, you know, in the area of the quarterback or maybe either. either uh, it's, e it's either going to be roughing the passer or holding on the offensive line, one of the two. Let's hope for holding on the offensive line. I believe, and Andy, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe a roughing the passer would negate the interception. That's correct. So this is going to be a big uh, call here on what happens. And the, the, the refereeing crew here is talking quite a bit about this. 14 to nothing the score. Nettleton with a two-touchdown lead over Forest City. 144 remaining in the first quarter. A lot of discussion going on out there between three of the Members of this officiating crew. Beautiful night for football here at Forest City. And Nettleton with a, an early lead. An interception on that play by Dorian Tucker. A long return. Returned it inside the 20-yard line. I believe the ball is marked at the 14, if I'm not mistaken. But the flag there close to the line of scrimmage. And uh, they are... They're definitely taking their time and getting this thing discussed, Andy. It's a long discussion by the officiating crew. Yeah, and, and it happened in a change of possession, so that gets a bit confusing. So we're about to find out what happened. Uh, illegal hands to the face, is that what yep, that is? That's he illegal hands to the face against Nettleton. That's so correct. It's going to be after the return. I don't. It's not going to negate the interception. It should be a Raider ball. It's a spot foul. It happened at about the 30-yard line. They're going to make it a 15-yard penalty from where it happened. So it will be first and 10 for the Raiders 
at the Forest City 44-yard line. Middleton would have been nice to get all of that yardage after the Dorian Tucker interception, his second of the season, but we'll take it. We'll take the turnover. A minute 44 to play in the first quarter. Middleton will have the ball first and 10 at the Mustang 44. Uh, yeah, Co Coach Hampton is talking to the referees, and he's not convinced that this was uh, administered correctly as far as where the play ended up and where the ball ended up. And I think they're going to talk about this just a little bit more to see if this is where the play is going to start here. And some more discussion going on among the officiating crew after Coach Hampton spoke his piece. And you can bet Coach Hampton, a very cerebral cro coach, he knows, the, uh, he knows the game, he knows the rule book. And he is like the officials. They want to just get it right, get the call right, doing his part to help the officiating crew do that. Right now, it's Nettleton ball, first and 10 on the Mustang 44. Let's see if they change that at all after the discussion with Coach Hampton. He's still, uh, Coach Hampton, I seems to be pretty sure about this because now he's sending the other line judge to talk to the, the head referee on how they administer yep. the penalty and where that started from. And I'm uh, at the end of the run where it happened or such. And I'm and just now realizing it's Mustang ball. I was, I've, it's, uh, they, the, so the penalty in their mind negated the interception. The four city offense is out there on the field. Andy, that just not, does not seem right to me. But it's, it's four well, city Well, ball. they're still talking about it. Right. So this game is ground to a screeching halt here. It is 14 to nothing Raiders, 144 remaining in the first quarter. We do know that much. It was uh, the call was uh, illegal hands to the face, and now the, the man with the white hat is running back like he was going to say something else, but um, as it is, it looks like it's Mustang ball, first and 10 on their own 44-yard line, uh, and the referee is coming over to talk things over now with the Forest City coaching staff, and they just moved the ball back to the 40-yard line. <laughs> the, the penalty took place at the 30. That's – for sure, and it should have been, I think, a 10-yard penalty. That's what they've marked it off as, a 10-yard spot foul. But it was an interception, and I guess the only thing I can figure is they're saying it happened before the interception, Andy, and therefore right. it negated the interception. Yeah, if it happened uh, before the play, like somebody got punched in the face of an offensive lineman or even a quarterback as he's trying to throw the football, I didn't, I, I'll have to go back and watch the replay and kind of see what happened there then it would absolutely have happened before the interception. But it is Forest City ball. They have it first and 10 from their own 40. Confusion out there on the field, but we do know that it is first and 10 Mustangs. They give the ball running right side. Pretty good run, a gain of, eight, of nine for the Mustang running back. That's number 24. His name is DePrince Jones. Gain of nine, actually, second down and one. Yeah, I suspect that Alan Johnson's probably about to start queuing up some uh, blitzes and some twists uh, to get his linebackers running free and start catching this kid before he gets running. Ball is on the Mustang 49-yard line. Forest City has it second down and one. The Raiders with a 14-0 lead, less than a minute to play here in the first quarter. Mustangs fumble the snap. Quarterback has stood up at the line of scrimmage. Jorge Salas in on the tackle for the Raiders. It's going to be a short loss for the Mustangs. See Blake Brown with his nose in there as well. It's going to be third down and one. No gain on the play. Craig, is Jamie Morris out there, back out there? Is, did, uh, is Cortez coming in for him? I did not see Jamie. It looks like it yeah. may be uh, Demayan Person has uh, come in for Jamie. Okay, yeah, I, I, he took a pretty big lick on that uh, interception return, so I'll keep an eye out and see if he makes it back to the field or not. Ball on the 49-yard line. It's third down and one for the Mustangs. They trailed the Raiders 14 to nothing. Third and one, quarterback sneak right up the middle. He's got the first down. So they move the chains and the horn blows. That's the end of the first quarter. Nettleton 14, Forest City 0. We'll be right back in 60 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. It's football time at Wings to Go. That means all the TVs watching the game 
All the wings will be hot and flavorful. All the food will be good. It is time to come to Wings to Go. We've weathered the storm. It's almost over. Things are getting better, and we can't wait to see you at Wings to Go. Sports, wings, football, life is great at Wings to Go. Both locations. See Plaza Tire Service for the right tire at the right price right now. Plaza Tire Service is the area's biggest selection of in-stock tires at the lowest price. While others are searching for tires to order, we'll get you fixed up with a great set of tires and back on the road in no time with our four tires, one hour guarantee. Plus, we make the purchase easy on your budget with our Plaza Tire Service card or no credit needed financing options. For the right tire at the right price right now, the choice is easy. That's Plaza Tire Service. We welcome you back to Raider football on the EAB Sports Network. Well, after the first quarter, Nettleton leads Forest City 14-0. The Raiders dominated the first quarter, but Forest City has a little momentum right now. They've got the ball first and 10 after a first down. <coughs> and they got the ball inside Raider territory at the 47-yard line. Yeah, Craig, and we see Jamie Morris to get back in the game, so it's good to see that. I was kind of worried about the hit he took in that interception return. Give to the tailback, number 24, and he's got a little bit of running room. There's a fumble on the play as Blake Brown came up and stuck him, but the ball was fumbled out of bounds. Going to get a little bit of positive yardage out of the fumble. Uh, the net result of the play is a gain of seven. It's going to be second down and three for the Mustangs on the Raider 41-yard line. Yeah, you know, both running backs for Four City, uh, very uh, athletic kids. Number 12, uh, Courtney Austin, number 24, DePrince Jones, both both very shifty, very fast and athletic, and Nettleton's probably going to start queuing up uh, some blitzes and some, uh, some new looks on the front and get in the backfield. Second down and three. Boy, that's a hard hit right there, and let's hope everybody is all right. Curtis Smith. Throws him out of bounds, close to the first down. Son of a gun. That was Nettleton's Jamie Morris. Uh, he's been a part of some collisions tonight, hasn't he, Andy? That's going to be a first down for Forest City. Yeah, your weak side linebacker there uh, taking on the uh, fullback in the backfield. <laughs> he certainly tried to blow it up, and I would assume that we're probably going to kind of watch him move in the next couple of plays because that was a big collision there. It is a, it's not a contact sport, it's a collision sport, high school football, and that was a big collision in the backfield. First down and 10 for the Mustangs. They give again to the tailback. He's running left side, and he's got more positive yardage as he's out to the Raider 30-yard line. It's going to be a gain of about five, actually a gain of closer to seven, second down and three for Forest City, ball on the Raider 30. Second down and three for the Mustangs. The Raiders lead this game 14 to zero. 11 minutes on the clock remaining in the second quarter. Give again to the tailback and he's running left side, has the first down. Say what you want to about the old I formation, Andy, but Forest City moving the ball quite effectively with it right now. Yeah, they are, they look, they look good. Uh, you know, they're getting a little push on their offensive line. Their lead blockers are uh, opening up some holes. And like I said, both of those two tailbacks for Fort City, Fort City uh, very athletic, very athletic. Yep, and there is a timeout on the field. Nettleton takes a timeout, or actually it might have been Forest City that took the timeout. As it is, there's a timeout. We will take a timeout with them, a 30-second break. When we come back, more Raider football on the EAB Sports Network. Every July 4th here, refinish the floors here twice. Sized up your daughter's boyfriends here, waited in the doorway all day when your son was coming home on leave. This place has given you all you've dreamed of and now it's giving again in the form of a gourmet kitchen and the quietest dishwasher known to man. Realize your dream with a home equity line of credit from Simmons Bank. Dreams realized. SimmonsBank.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender subject to credit approval. Second quarter action here at Sam Smith Stadium. 
at the NEA Baptist Broadcasting Location at Sam Smith Stadium at Forest City High School. Get better with Baptist. Nettleton 14, Forest City 0, but Forest City driving. They have it first and 10 at the Nettleton 22-yard line, 23-yard line. Quarterback rolls out right side, little bootleg. He's got some room to run. He is inside the 10-yard line, brought down at the 5, and it's going to be first down and goal to go for Forest City. Ball on their Raiders' six-yard line. There is a Raider down on the field. That is Jamie Morris. Jamie looks like he's favoring his right lower leg, it looks like. His right knee is what seems to be hurting him. And let's hope that that is a cramp, Andy. Nothing more. Jamie Morris is a young man that's been a part of some, some big collisions tonight. One of the great athletic trainers from St. Bernard Sports Medicine down there looking at him. And yeah, Nick Haywood is our athletic trainer for Nelson. He does a great job. There was a there was a great story about him taking care of one of uh, Nettleton's right. women's basketball players. Kyra a James. A few, yep. uh, few months ago. Um, he's, he's, he's an outstanding team player and does a great job for us there at Nettleton and takes care of all those athletes, and they trust him. And, and uh, I'm sure Coach Hampton appreciates him being out and being available. Jamie Morris is up, and he is jogging off the field. That's wonderful news. And he seems to be doing just fine. As it is, it's first down and goal to go for Forest City. The ball is on the Nettleton six-yard line. 10-34 remaining in the second quarter. Nettleton with a 14-0 lead over the Mustangs. But the Mustangs coming in as the heavy underdogs tonight for sure. But, boy, they are effectively moving the football against the Raiders right now. Little blast left side, the tailback. He is inside the five-yard line. And... Going to be second down and goal to go from the four. Look like maybe a little bit more extracurricular activity after the play involving uh, number 52, Jacoby Shell. He is playing with a uh, a lot of passion. I guess that would be a nice way to say it out there right now. Him and old Ryan Pugh kind of got tangled up a little bit after the play. Second down and goal to go from the four yard line, running right side, and that is a touchdown for Forest City. Touchdown for the Mustangs, Darius Chris, four-yard touchdown run. Well, I'm sure that Forest City uh, could use that type of momentum. They have not had a whole lot of success over the last few weeks, and and uh, which is surprising to me because if you see their backfield, I mean, gosh, I mean, the two or three kids that are in their backfield, I, I think would would benefit any uh, 5A team right now. Uh, but you know, maybe their offensive line is the issue, but uh, they look good in the backfield. They're going to go for two. The pass is intercepted after a deflection. That's Markel and Barber who had it intercepted, and that would be a pick six if you could return a um, conversion attempt. You cannot in high school football. So it was deflected, intercepted by Markel and Barber, but the result, no good, two-point conversion. 9.42 to play in the second quarter. The score is now Nettleton 14, Forest City 6. Would, would that be a pick six? Maybe a pick two? A pick two. I think it would, that would be a two points. Be okay, a pick two, right. just, I think. Just checking on your uh, <laughs> terminology there, your pick six. Yes. Yeah, just seeing if you knew that rule. Yes. It, that is just a um, force of habit. Uh, a cornerback intercepts the ball, <laughs> returns it to a touchdown. Pick six, such a cool thing to say, pick six. But you're right, in that particular circumstance, it would not be a pick six. It would be a pick two. I don't have quite the same ring to it. It's a pick it two. Doesn't. So Forest City with a nice drive, and they put the ball in the end zone, and they are playing with a lot of passion out there. This Mustang team, they are down this year, but, boy, they are playing up right now. Kickoff is fielded by Keandre Pope. Keandre looking for some running room, a good return by Keandre. Gets it out to the 41-yard line of the Raiders, and that's where Nettleton will take over first and 10 with an eight-point lead, 9.42 remaining here in the second quarter. Well, you know, really the, the, the game, uh, 
the the atmosphere, the feel of this game changed dramatically after what appeared to be a big, huge Nettleton interception that right. got called back, overturned. Forest City gets the ball back, and they drive down and score. Uh, Nettleton needs to reestablish the control of this game here in this offensive series. Cameron Scarlett gives to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley looking to run right side. Not much of a hole. He gets a gain of one. It's going to be second down and nine for the Raiders, who went three and out on their last possession. Yeah, there's, there's Nettleton has been in this position before several times throughout this season against Harrison, against Mountain Home, and responding with a positive offensive series. Uh, they can they can take control of the, of the football game back like they had it, and that's exactly what needs to happen in this series. Second down and nine. Cameron Scarlett in an empty backfield. Twins right, twins left. Let's see if the Raiders want to throw. And Scarlett, quarterback draw, running right side, breaks two or three tackles, has the first down. Gutsy run there by Cameron Scarlett. First down, Raiders. That's a nice play, you know, when you go empty backfield. And, and like I talked to earlier uh, in this game that, uh, four cities gone to a man-to-man -man, uh, offense, and it's really hard to throw the football against them when they have good athletes. Nettleton with the hurry up. They give to Kobe Bradley, and he is brought down in the backfield. Actually, I believe he got to the line of scrimmage, but it's going to be no gain on the play. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Ball on the four city 48-yard line. 8.30 remaining in the second quarter. Nettleton up 14-6. I still expect Coach Hampton to be able you know, to, to call some – passing plays because Cameron's very capable of throwing the ball down the field. It's going to have to change kind of what routes we're looking at. And instead of go routes and, and uh, stop routes, we're going to have to do crossing routes against this man-to-man. -man. Scarlett gives to Kobe Bradley, right side, finds the edge and is tackled short of the first down by about four yards. It's going to be a gain of five, maybe five and a half yards. It's going to be third down and a long three for the Raiders. There is a flag on the field at the 40-yard line near hash. Clock is stopped with eight minutes remaining in the first half. Nettleton with a 14-6 lead over Forest City. The referee jogging over to the Nettleton sideline to talk things over with Coach Hampton. That usually means it's against Forest City. And he's running through the options if, with Coach Hampton if he wants to accept the penalty or decline. And let's see what Coach Hampton has decided to do. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct against the Raiders. Personal foul. And I believe there may be a Raider ejected. Andy, he did this right here, did he not? Well, let's see. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks like Ryan Crawford has been ejected from this game. Yeah, um, Craig, I don't, I don't want to speak on this, but uh, I will tell you, let's watch uh, the replay. There was not much there at all. That was a pretty uh, questionable call uh, as far as the extracurricular activity that was going on uh, at that play. Scarlett back to pass, throwing far, uh, far sideline. It is complete to Ken Warren McShan. Short of the first down by about three yards, but a fine throw and catch. Scarlett to McShan. It's going to be second down, excuse me, third down and three for the Raiders. Yeah, that I, I, you know, is a great play, great throw and catch there, it's especially the catch on the sideline there. But uh, I, I can't help but go back to the fact that our, 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 big offensive lineman has just been ejected out of this game for what was appeared to be relatively nothing laying on the ground. Cameron Scarlett with the ball running up the middle, has the first down, still on his feet to the 25-yard line, thereabouts, 26-yard line, first down Raiders. Well, uh, there's nothing better than a, a senior quarterback to take over after a, a really weird game going on right now. You know, the game started off to be – Pretty predictable, and, and this game has certainly taken a turn for the weirdness. Uh, Cameron Scarlett taking over and say, saying, we're going to put some more points on the board and take this game over. First and 10 for the Raiders. Kobe Bradley, the ball carrier, fighting his way down inside the 20-yard line of the Mustangs. Going to be a gain of maybe eight after a tough run by Bradley. 
second down and two for the Raiders, maybe second down and three. Oh, it's tough running by Kobe Bradley, and once again, I'm a big fan of his. I like the way sometimes he dances in the hole, and then sometimes he just lowers his shoulder and tries to run over people. Scarlett fakes the toss, running left side. He is has the first down, down to near the 10-yard line. So move the chains, Nettleton knocking on the door. They have a 14-point lead, excuse me, a 14-6 lead, 640 remaining in the second quarter. The new center into the game for Nettleton is Zach Davis. He's a sophomore taking over for Ryan Crawford, who was ejected for the game after an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that sure didn't seem to be much. Crawford, a great young man, easygoing young man. Gives to Kobe Bradley up the middle to the five-yard line. That's where he is brought down. It's going to be second down and goal to go from the five. Allen Campbell's on the ground. Yeah, Campbell seems to be holding his left leg, looking low on the left leg of the Nettleton starting left tackle, Allen Campbell. As Andy said, this game has kind of taken a turn for the weird. 6.04 remaining in the second quarter. As Campbell is up, and he is walking on his own power to the sideline. That is good to see. But that's the second offensive lineman that we've had removed from the game. One due to ejection, Ryan Crawford. And then Alan Campbell uh, with a, uh, a bum leg, it looks like. He's walking under his own power, and hopefully he'll be back in. Right now it's second down and goal to go for the Raiders. Ball on the five-yard line. Cameron Scarlett from the gun. Scarlett's going to keep it, running up the middle, has room into the end zone. Touchdown, Cameron Scarlett. Touchdown, Raiders. Well, that, you know, you go back to your senior quarterback, and, and I don't know how many other words we can describe how this game feels right now. Is I, I would say discombobulated, if, it, if a word that I could come up with. And I think Cameron, you know, I don't know if Steve Hampton says, hey, Cameron, we need you to take over, you and Kobe. Y'all take over this game and reset this tone back to what it was when the game started. And that's the drive that they did it on, even after an offensive lineman is ejected, after another offensive lineman is pulled from the game, and both of them really just kind of took the ball and said, we're fixing to put some more points on the board. That's exactly what they did. Golden's kick is up and good. However, there is a, a penalty marker down. Let's see if it was before, if it was on Forest City, then this is obviously going to be declined, and it looks like it is going to be on Forest City as the Nettleton PAT team is. Yes, yeah, offsides against Forest City. And what I wouldn't be surprised they may Greg, go if for two yeah, here. If they're going to move it up, they may say just move it up and then put our offensive back on the field and go for two here. Hmm. Especially well, since Four City didn't get their PAT. I don't know. I think we're well changing our mind now. Actually, call time out. Time out to talk it over, maybe. So where it stands right now, 5:48 remaining in the second quarter, Nettleton with a 20 to six lead. We'll take a 30 second break and we'll come back to Sam Smith Stadium right after this message. You are tuned in to Raider Football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Trust your heart to better care at NEA Baptist. Better access means communication with your award-winning cardiac team anytime, anywhere with the MyChart app. Better technology means leading the state with new treatments and interventions right here in Jonesboro. Better is an integrated team of experts at your service when seconds matter. Your heart deserves better. Find it at NEA Baptist. And we welcome you back to Forest City, where Nettleton has a 20 to 6 lead over the Mustangs of Forest City. And Nettleton, the PAT kick was good, but there was a penalty called on Forest City. So now the Nettleton is elected to try a two point conversion here. 
Scarlett running right up the middle, and boy, he's hit at the wow. line of scrimmage and just battles his way into the end zone. Two-point conversion good. The score is 22-6. to six. Oh, great. Uh, that, that's a will to, to score and a will to win uh, right there in just one play. And we have seen that type of uh, attitude and approach to football the entire season by Cameron Scarlett. Once again, like we talked about, this game has pretty – really uh, had an odd change to it and Cameron and Kobe both you know along with the entire offense but I mean certainly they they carried the burden of that offensive series on their shoulders and then marched right down the field pulled this game back to the original feel that we thought we were going to have uh, tonight so uh, be interesting to see what happens now on the Nettleton defensive side of the ball if they can maintain that momentum they just got back. Contentious atmosphere tonight for sure. There's been some extracurricular activity after a couple of plays. And and uh, our starting center, Offensive Player of the Week last week, Ryan Crawford, outstanding young man who uh, appeared to get tied up with a Mustang after a play. And the referee uh, ejected Crawford. Did not appear from my vantage point to be justified at all. Forest City with a return out to the 27-yard line before the Raider kickoff team, Juan Badillo, in on the stop for the Raiders. So it's going to be first and 10, Forest City. And this drive will start from their own 27. This will be a good time for a big three-and-out stop by the Raider defense, Andy. Yeah, I, I, you know, the Nettleton's offense absolutely spoke. And they said, okay, we're going to take the momentum back and control this football game. The next – the next uh, uh, speech needs to be from the defense <laughs> here. They need to say, okay, yes, we are here also, and let's get this game back to where the game plan that we thought how this thing game was going to go down tonight. Mustangs going from the I formation tonight. They have it on their own 28-yard line. And, boy, Jordan Pegram strips the ball in the backfield. Loose ball. It looks like the Raiders have it. Jordan Pegram immediately there to stop the ball carrier. Hit him so hard, knocked his shoestrings loose, and it knocked the ball loose from him. Looks like the Raiders have recovered the fumble. Yep, and they have. Javante Wallace, fumble recovery, forced by Jordan Pegram, and that is the defensive speech that Andy Shatley was talking about. It was a little shorter than what I thought it might be. Uh, it was a one word, uh, and it was Jordan Pegram. Actually, he was unblocked, and he met the running back in the backfield and hit him right in the chest. And it's hard to get a handoff when <laughs> your defensive lineman is hitting you right in the chest. And he, he hit right at the mesh point. The ball was on the floor immediately, and that's exactly the answer that you wanted to see by Nettleton's defense in outstanding field position for Nettleton offense now. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Scarlett with the screen pass. Oh, man, it was dropped by Jaden Brown. And he had room to run. As it is, incomplete pass, second down and 10. Would have loved to have seen him well, haul that, that one there in. There was a lot of green grass or green turf in between <laughs> him and the goal post there. Uh, that was a decently thrown football by Cameron Scarlett. And, you know, if you ask Jaden, I can assure you he will say, I should have called that ball. I mean, his expectations are pretty high. He, sure. he, he knows that what type of player he is. Yeah, he's our leading receiver this year, you bet. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Scarlett in the backfield. This time gets to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley running left side. He is dashing down the sidelines to about the 10-yard line. It's going to be a first down for the Raiders. Let's see if it's first down and goal to go from the 9 or first down and 10 from – beyond the 10 as it is it's a first down it looks like it's going to be first down and goal to go from just about the 10 yard line you know our statistician uh, is is not here tonight but but I, I really feel like Kobe Bradley is approaching that thousand yard marker at, you know some somewhere in here he's got to be pretty close empty backfield for Cameron Scarlett Scarlett going to run it himself, running right side inside the five-yard line where he is brought down. Our statistician is Jeff McMillan, and his daughter Shana is close to having a baby tonight. That would That's be number two, number two would it not right. be? Yeah, yeah. Coach, Coach Josh Wright. And she's a former uh, Nettleton star. That's right. So best wishes to Josh and Shana Wright and Jeff and Donna McMillan. 
definitely wish those great people well. We appreciate Jeff. He's been a spotter for years for Nettleton and one of those guys, one of those parents that just does so much for the school that people don't really realize. Second down and goal to go from the five. Scarlett gives to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley bounces out left side. It's a race to the end zone and it's a race that Kobe Bradley wins. Touchdown Raiders, touchdown Kobe Bradley. And let's talk again, Jaden Brown. Uh, you, you know, we call his name a lot from nice catches and athletic ability and making big plays. But I've seen him so many times block downfield for Cameron and Kobe. Uh, he, he is just a well-rounded football player. And right there, you know, Kobe cuts it all the way back. And who's sitting there and hits somebody upside the head? Jaden Brown. I right. mean, he you don't, you don't see that show up in the statistics and the box scores. But I can assure you, Kobe will walk back and say, hey, th thanks for throwing that block for me. Absolutely. I've said this before. Downtown Jaden Brown is a good football player. Golden on to kick. The extra point is up, and it is good. That's Golden's third extra point of the night, and it makes the score 29-6. to six. So going into this game, Kobe Bradley had 889 yards rushing, 10 touchdowns. And he's added uh, quite a bit to that already tonight. He has. He has. I would say he's probably already eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark. If he hasn't, he's very approach. He's got to be approaching tonight. So I would be interested to see, you know, the stats come out tomorrow to see if he didn't surpass the 1,000 rushing uh, yard mark. And I will say, I already say it. If he did uh, surpass it, congratulations. What a what a fine young man and a fine football player Kobe Bradley is. He's had a heck of a season for sure. I'm very proud of of Kobe. Proud of these Raiders. Uh, Forest City had the momentum just a few minutes ago, as it is right now. Nettleton with the big 29 to 6 lead, 428 in the second quarter. Kendrick McShann on to kick off. Kicks it deep. Ball is fielded at the 10 yard line. Here come the Mustangs. Big open field tackle right there by the Raiders. And that was. Number 22, what a game that young man has had, Jamie Morris. He is he makes a fine tackle, uh, about a seven yards on the return. It's going to be first down four and ten for the Mustangs. This drive will be starting. Uh, it looks like 11. It looks like a, on the 21-yard line. So 11 yards on the return. Yeah, he's had a tough night, and I uh, he's taken some pretty good blows tonight. Um, we we will continue to see how well he do, he does on the, on the field, uh, but he's he plays a physical type of a football game. So it's first down and ten for the Mustangs on their own 21 yard line. Give to the tailback, runs left side, has no room to run. Big Cam Phillips there to make the initial contact. Jordan Pegram in there to help, give an assist to Pegram. It's going to be. I say no room to run. He, after it was all said and done, he gained six yards after it. Second down and four. Yeah, that uh, last series that was successful for Nettleton, you know, helping Forest City cough the football up. It's Nettleton's defense showing a little different uh, uh, front, a little different movement up, and that can confuse an offensive line and uh, put some people in some open places to make some negative play tackles in the backfield. Second down and four. Nettleton with a 29 to six lead. Running up the middle, breaks through, and Javante Wallace and Mark Ellen Barber make the tackle downfield. It's a first down for Forest City. The ball on their own 39 yard line. 3:32 to play in the second quarter. Nettleton up 29 six. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely impressed with Forest City's running backs. They they've got two or three running backs, uh, thoroughbreds that can really run the football. And they run physical and they're fast. Uh, I, I, I definitely don't think that's been Four City's issue is the athletic ability in the backfield. That's not their issue. And they have been moving the ball well tonight against the Raiders. Nettleton with four down linemen. Give to the tailback, and boy, he's hit hard by Jordan Pegram. I don't know if you could pick that up on our microphones, but Jordan Pegram just laid the wood to the running back. Short gain. It's going to be second down and nine for Forest City. You know, when you can hear the pads pop up in the press box, mm. yeah, I, I, it's hard to describe to our listeners, wh wh you know, how hard Jordan Pegram is hitting. But, I mean, you hear the pads and the helmet pop up here in the press box when Jordan hits people. Jordan 6'3", 260, and the young man is quick. There was an awful lot of force behind that hit. 
I think that young man will feel that one tomorrow. Second down and nine, 235 and ticking is the clock. Give again to the tailback. Jordan Pegram leading the tackle, loses his helmet. The ball carrier falls forward to the 45-yard line. It's going to be third down and five for Forest City, and I'm afraid Jordan's going to have to come out for a play because his helmet came off. I think it was loosened that last play. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to beat Jordan Pegram's helmet, period. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of force the way that young man plays football. He has had a tremendous junior season for sure. He sure looks to me like somebody who's going to be playing on Saturdays within well, the next he, couple of years. Well, him being a junior, can you imagine what he's going to look like next year? Third down and five for the Mustangs. Running left side, and he is hit by, again, Jamie Morris, who have having himself a night well short of the first down, maybe a gain of one. It's going to be fourth down and a long three for Forest City. With 128 on the clock and ticking, Nettleton with a 29 to 6 lead. Let's see if Forest City elects to go for it here or if they punt. They're running a couple of guys out, and I believe they're going to try to punt the football, Andy, with just run as much of the clock off as they can. I'm, I'm not convinced of that. It looks like their offensive unit is out there to, run, to go on fourth and four here. And they're going to pass. Quarterback rolling out left under pressure. And the ball is nearly intercepted by Jamie Morris. It is in and out of his hands a couple of times. Incomplete pass. Clock stops at 53 seconds. And Nettleton will have the ball after the turnover on downs. They have a 29-6 lead. They have excellent field position. The ball is on the Forest City 46-yard line. 53 ticks on the clock. And I believe Nettleton has three timeouts. Or is that correct, Andy? The, yeah. the scoreboard is not saying, but... I believe we have three timeouts well, to work we, with. We called one timeout on the PAT down here. So I think that would be two timeouts, two timeouts. Left for us. Right. Yeah, And we got two uh, new offensive line. I think we talked to them. Uh, you know, Garrett Campbell's in the game. They're playing left tackle. And then uh, our new center is Zach Davis there. Screen pass complete to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley, he's at the 40, the 30, the 25, steps out of bounds. Smart play there by Kobe about the – 23-yard line, big gain, first down Raiders, 44 seconds on the clock. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, a play that works almost all the time to where you get a defense retreating like that for 40 seconds or, you know, less than a minute left in the game is a, is a slip screen to the left. That was a beautifully called play uh, by uh, Coach – is it Despain? Yeah, uh, offensive lineman. Coach Wilson. Oh, Coach, uh, sorry, Coach Wilson. There's another one. Pass complete to Jaden Brown. Jaden Brown has the ball inside the 15-yard line to the 13. This looks to be another Nettleton Raider first down. Clock has not stopped yet to move the chains. And yeah, now they're now they're moving it. The clock should have should have stopped, but it's still going. But it's it's a first down. They're going to have to stop, and they're going to have to give us some more time. Clock is at 14. Scarlet. Back to throw, and that's got to be pass interference, but they don't call it. Ten seconds on the clock, and that was a first down. They did not stop the clock to move the chains. There's about 15 seconds run off there that I wish that we could get back somehow. As it is, it's 29 to 6 Raiders, 10 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And I'd have to say that's a poor job by the officiating crew right there to let so much time tick off of the clock. Yeah, Coach Hampton was letting them know about it, too. Mm. So 10 seconds on the clock. Scarlett in the backfield. Ball on about the 14-yard line. Scarlett looking to pass. It is intercepted in the end zone by Forest City. Number 14 with the interception. He is tackled by Jaden Brown. And that well, I say that will be the way that the first half ends, but there's one second left on the clock. And I'm telling you, that was really, really bad officiating right there. Nettleton had the first down, and they uh, didn't actually, they're saying, it looks like they may be saying that's the end of the first half. Actually, they're not. There's one second on the clock. What a weird night at Four City. Nettleton up 29 to 6, one second remaining in the first half. Nettleton's defensive unit going out on the field is. Scarlett throws an interception in the end zone. Going for a 
going for the score, and he found a blue jersey in the end zone. And I'm assuming that Forest City will down the ball here, and then we'll go ahead and move to halftime And what is probably the uh, uh, the craziest first half that, that, that Nettleton has seen this year. Yeah, they take a knee, and that will bring an end to a very strange first half. The score is Nettleton 29, Forest City 6. We will uh, take a three-minute break. When we come back, we will have the halftime show, the St. Bernard's halftime show, brought to you by St. Bernard's at the Heart of Great Medicine for more than 120 years. The halftime show tonight features Nettleton assistant boys basketball coach Matt Ragsdale. He'll be in here in a few minutes. Andy and I will break down the first half. So we hope that you hang around for the St. Bernard's halftime show. You are tuned in to Nettleton Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. This is Keith Baird with Baird Auto Group. There's nothing that brings our community together like high school sports. No matter what the scoreboard says, it's a winning feeling just to be a part of it. At Baird, we want you to have the feeling anytime you come into one of our dealerships. Good credit, bad credit, no credit, no problem. Don't buy anywhere else until you shop at Baird location near you. Don't get a bad deal, get a Baird deal. Because why pay more? You're looking for some land you'd like to populate. All real estate, real estate, real estate dates. Listen, we all know the real estate market is crazy right now, so whether you're buying or selling, you deserve maximum value. You want real market knowledge. You want real negotiating power. You want real results. You need real estate name. Give me a call. I got you back. Call Real Estate, Real Estate, Real Estate Nate. Call today. Real Estate Nate with Halsey Thrasher Harpo Real Estate Group. 870-261-3927. For me, rice farming isn't a profession. It's been my life for more than 30 years. And as owner of Dela Plains Seed, I've been the region's rice tech leader for more than a decade. Every planting season, I'm in the fields right along with you. And we're figuring out how to make sure bushels mean dollars together. From selecting your hybrid rice to free on-farm delivery and one-on-one -on -one consultation, I'd like to help your rice field see more profit this season. I'm Terry Gray at Dela Plain Seed. Call me today at 870-249-3447. Let's talk about your best rice options. What does better mean to you? Maybe it's better services, better support, better ways to build a life or buy a home or run a business. First Security is your partner for it all with resources and solutions that make a difference for you and others. That's because First Security takes care of customers while building communities. Better for you, better for Arkansas, better for all. First Security, bank better. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Ship anything, anywhere at your number one shipping source, PacMail in Jonesboro. Bring anything to PacMail, and they'll pack it, ship it, crate it, freight it, no matter how big, fragile, or awkwardly shaped. Since 1998, PacMail has been your number one shipping source, the only authorized shipper of all the major carriers, UPS, FedEx, DHL, the Postal Service, and freight services, all in one store. At PacMail, you have choices. Here's PacMail Tim to tell us more. Trey, we are the experts at finding solutions for even the most demanding shipping situations. And our experienced staff can help you choose the best option. So if you need to go to the post office, then FedEx, or all the way out to UPS terminal, and then get that international shipment to DHL, you can do it all in one fast, convenient, and friendly place. PacMail. See, I told you, PacMail ships anything, anywhere, through any shipper. PacMail. Voted the number one printing, packaging, and shipping store in Jonesboro. Don't trust your shipping needs to just anybody. Trust PacMail. 361 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro. Ship anything, anywhere, today at PacMail. And we welcome you back to Sam Smith Stadium here in Forest City, Arkansas, where Nettleton has a 29-6 lead over Forest City in a wild and woolly first half. This is the St. Bernard's Halftime Show brought to you by St. Bernard's at the Heart of Great Medicine for more than 120 years. And we are joined in the halftime show by Nettleton assistant boys basketball coach coach Matt Ragsdale coach Ragsdale thank you for joining me on the uh, on the broadcast tonight oh it's good to be here I'm glad I could do it and finally got you I've asked you several times hey come come call color with me come be my halftime guest finally you're able to work it into your schedule you know that's a lie I've been the one asking you for <laughs> me to be doing color I, 
You're, you've really been missing out, Craig. Yeah, no doubt about it. Finally, a dream realized. We have Coach Ragsdale on the show. Coach, tell everybody, what all do you do for this Nettleton football team? Because I know you do a lot. What all do you do for this football program? Do a lot. I, I drive the bus. I'm, I'm, a glor I'm a glorified bus driver, let's you, be honest. But that's huge. I mean, the, the Raiders would not be 7-0 and without the bus driver taking them to the away games. Hey, me and Coach Hampton have, have a little thing going on right now. We are undefeated since I've been driving all these away games. So, w and, and I told them whenever we got on the bus today, make sure we keep that streak alive. And <laughs> as of now, it's looking okay. Hopefully we can keep it up in the second half. It is looking good with Nettleton with a 29-6 to lead at half for sure. And let's hope that um, we get the old turbo clock rule in effect and uh, we get to go home. You get to drive the bus before 10 o'clock tonight. I'm hoping soon. Uh, ho I hope that happens. Get home, see the family a little bit earlier. Absolutely. Now, I know that's not all you do for the program. You also do the scoreboard for the uh, for the home games as well. I do. I'm on the clock. So when all those parents are uh, are yelling at the clock and yelling the score's wrong and all that type of stuff, you're yelling at me. So, uh, <laughs> you know, show, show me a little mercy. Maybe we'll give out your email address. They can just uh, direct all of their vitriol electronically through the email. It is craig.miller <laughs> at nettletonschools.net. <laughs> That's the complaint department. Coach Matt Ragsdale, the Nettleton assistant boys basketball coach with us. Well, a lot of people out there still may not know you, Coach. This is your second year at Nettleton, but a lot of people may not know you. So let's get to know Coach Ragsdale. Start off, well, first of all, I'm going to ask you about your, your family. But the first question I'm going to ask you is one you undoubtedly hear a whole lot. Are you any kin to Corey Ragsdale? <laughs> I'm not kin to the Corey Ragsdale. I tell a lot of people that I am because, you know, he's he is a famous figure yeah. in Nettleton school history. So, no doubt. you know, if, uh, you know, a lot of people will ask me that, and, I'll, you know, sometimes I just roll with it. Absolutely, that's my uncle, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're boys. He's going to be the next manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, and, I'll see you know, we're going, we're going from there. You see, that's what I was going to ask you <laughs> a little bit later about the Cardinals managerial search. But So you are uh, no relation to Corey. Tell None. us about the rest of your family. Well, I've, I've actually uh, I'm married. I've got two kids, a four-year-old Decker and a two-year-old Tatum. And uh, I'm announcing to the world right now, we've got another one on the way. What? Uh, did you not know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've, we've brought that out to the world. This is breaking news. Last week. Yep. That's she, phenomenal. She's about 14, 15 weeks along. So phenomenal. got another one on the way, another boy. Uh, you know I'm it's a boy already. Three boys. Man, that's great. It's crazy. It's what? about to be crazy at the Ragsdale household. You know, Charlie Daniels once said, what this world needs is a few more rednecks. I think what this world needs is a few more Ragsdales. Absolutely. And you're doing but, your part. But you know what? After this third one, I don't know if I can handle any more. <laughs> I, I don't know. Three boys. I love it. So congratulations to Mr. and Miss Ragsdale. Wonderful Appreciate young it. couple. Are, is the family, like, listening right now, you think? I don't know. Laren knows that, that I'm on. I don't know if she's if she's listening. If she is, hey, Laren, shout out. Shout out. There you go. People love the shout outs. And you, she, can, if she's not listening, she can always watch the replay. Okay. I'll and let uh, her know. Yeah. I'll so let her know that I'm talking about her. I'm telling good things. Absolutely. Coach Matt Ragsdale, our guest here at halftime. Coach, where did you grow up and where did you go to high school? I grew up in uh, in Bentonville, Arkansas. Went to Bentonville High School. That's a pretty big school. It, it is. It is. Whenever I was there, it was the biggest school in the state. Uh, that was back when there were only five classifications. Uh, that's kind of showing how old I am right now. But, uh, yep, there were five classifications. We were in the 5A West um, up there in northwest Arkansas. Uh, then I went and played at Harding University, played college basketball at Harding University. Um, went to Mammoth Spring for two years. Then I was at Bald Knob for six years. And then I've uh, been here for two glorious years. That's, uh, man, you, you just covered all my next three or four questions. Oh, I was, no. I was uh, going to ask you. <laughs> let's, oh, no. let's go back to your high school days. Okay. You, you said you went to Bentonville. Yep. What all sports did you play in high school? And obviously, basketball was your favorite, I would assume. Basketball was definitely my favorite. I played football in high school as well. Because okay, you're a big guy. Yeah. I mean, if you get, like, what are you, 6'4, six, 6'5? Six, Come on, Craig. I'm like six, 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 seven. Okay, my bad. Come on, my Come bad. On. As tall as I am, you know, people seem shorter than what they really are. Well, everybody, everybody, I look, you know, people ask how how tall I am all the time, and I'm just at seven foot, seven two. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, I keep getting taller and taller. <laughs> but you are a legit six six then. Six six. 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 I'm a legit six six. six six. In my shoes, I'm six seven. So most of the time, I tell people I'm six seven. Go with it, man. Go yeah, with but it. Now in high school, I didn't look like this. You know, I'm six. Six six and about you know two hundred and forty pounds. 
I was about 6'6 and about 180 pounds My when word. I graduated high school. That's pretty lean. Yes, I was I was lean. I was a stick. So playing playing football, I played I played receiver, played some tight end, and that's that's what I played on the football field. And uh, no, if I would have looked like this, I would have felt a lot better on that football field than I did at, at 170, 175. Yes, yep. absolutely. Well, man, you you filled out for sure, and and obviously I probably comments. I don't know if something that's a compliment. Oh, is it that is. A compliment? It is. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. it's uh, that's a compliment. It's you, you all know, muscle. You know. <laughs> You're no longer the string bean you were in in high school, but you mentioned earlier you played college basketball. Tell us about your college basketball career. Well, I played at Harding. Uh, I redshirted my freshman year. Played four years for Coach Morgan. Uh, enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, won uh, two GAC, or actually back in the day it was GSC championships at Harding. Um, went to two NCAA tournaments and had had a great career. Um, loved it. Played. Played a lot of basketball. It was fun at a very high level. So you uh, you played basketball collegiately, high school. You loved the game so much. You decided you wanted to spend your life coaching it. I had to be. I had to be. I you know actually I you know I, I've I've told this story before, but whenever I was in college for about three and a half years, I was pre physical therapy, and uh, got to my senior year of college and said I can't get away from the sport. I love it too much. And that was one thing that I kind of took into that, and you know, it, it was it was that camaraderie, it was that competitiveness that that uh, that basketball brings to my life, and I I loved it too much. I could not get away from it, so I said, you know what, the easiest way to stay around the game for the rest of my life is become a basketball coach. I love it. So I love it, and, and I've and I've loved doing it ever since. You know, I, this is going to shock you, but I view guys like you as real heroes in our society. As you know, coaches they have such an impact on young people. Billy Graham once said, "A coach impacts more people in one season than most people do in a whole lifetime." That's the kind of impact that a coach has. Undoubtedly, you had some coaches who had a big impact on you. Who are some of the guys who who uh, impacted your life from? from as a coach absolutely there's a there's a bunch of guys to be honest um I'm, i mentioned one uh coach jeff morgan who was my my college basketball coach he really inspired me to you know really really be the man that i am not necessarily the coach that i am but be the man that i am and uh you know he he was definitely a coach that uh that i really looked up to that inspired me but to be honest with you it was, it, it was my dad my dad was the man that really inspired me to to go out and influence the people in the way that that I know how the way that he raised me to be, you know, and and it was it was something that he was very proud of me for for wanting to get into coaching, and uh, you know it's it's just something that, you know, I I know that my position can influence a lot of people, and that's one thing that I want to make sure that I do to everybody that I come in contact with. I want to make sure I'm a positive impact, and uh, you know my dad always taught me to be that man, and you know that's what I. I strive daily for. Coach Matt Ragsdale, Nettleton's assistant boys basketball coach, our guest on the St. Bernard's halftime show. Coach, where all have you coached at, and how did you get to Nettleton? So I, I had started out, I was a graduate assistant at Harding University in 2012 and uh, ended up at Mammoth Spring for a year uh, as, a, as a head co head boys coach at Mammoth Spring. And then uh, my wife got into uh, graduate school to be a speech pathologist at, uh, at Harding. We, had, we, we met at Harding, and so she got back into the graduate program there. And uh, so the, uh, the bald knob AD called me uh, kind of out of the blue, didn't really know him. He didn't, I don't know how much he knew about me, and basically offered me the job on the spot, which was, which was God telling me that, hey, you, you know, get up there, you know, get to Cersei. And uh, so, so we moved to Searcy. Um, I was a head coach at Bald Knob for six years. Uh, enjoyed my time at Bald Knob uh, for those six years. Had some really good teams. Battled. Had some, you know, had had a lot of good players and a lot of guys that I still keep in touch with. Very good. I just had a fantasy basketball draft with some of the guys <laughs> that that uh, that I coached. And I'm I was up in the stands while ago, actually texting some of the guys that. That uh, that I'd coach. So what you know, like kind of what you said uh, earlier, it's it's awesome to just stay in contact and just see where those guys those guys are today. And uh, so I was at Bald Knob for six years, and then uh, last year during kind of the the COVID stuff, uh, Nettleton came open, and my my wife's brother 
is the Paragould Junior High coach, and so we decided we were it was it was kind of time to move on from Bald Knob, and uh, this job came open, and 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 I I liked what I heard, I liked what I saw, and came on up. That's awesome. Glad that you did. That's Coach Matt Ragsdale. I'd say that outside of having to work with Bubba Deaton, Nettleton's a great place to work. <laughs> Absolutely it is. I, I love it at Nettleton. It's great. It is a great place. And you're, uh, you're great friends with a good buddy of mine, Royce McMillan. Want to give him yep. a shout out? Shout out to Royce. The head volleyball coach at uh, Crowley's Ridge Academy. Mm -hmm. So we will say uh, for us guys with the Schrader pride, we want to say go Falcons and good luck to my man Royce. Basketball season is coming up, Coach. We're going to broadcast the games here on 94.1, Bob FM, and Nettleton TV. What can we expect to see from the Raiders this season? Well, I'll tell you this. We've had a heck of a preseason. It's been fun every single day. It's been one of the one of the best preseasons I've ever been a part of. And, uh, and, and, man, these guys come to work every single day. Their competitiveness, the way that they come to work, they've really bought in. To what we to what we're bringing to the table, and I, I think that's just the toughness, the attitude that we want to play with, and the way we want to play. They've bought into it. Um, they've done they've done extraordinary things in the weight room. We've gotten we've gotten bigger, we've gotten stronger, we've gotten faster, we've gotten quicker, and it's just been awesome to see uh, the transformations in in their games and their bodies. And uh, everything that they've they've been able to accomplish in the preseason, and man, we are pumped up. We're we're at the point where we're like, man, we're tired of practicing. Let's go play somebody. It's you about know, it's, it's about that time. It's about that time. It really is. November 11th is our first game. We've got a got a benefit game with Little Rock Catholic at home. So uh, everybody needs to come out, support us. We finally have a a full full gym that we can pack out this year. So awesome. definitely come out and uh, and watch some really good basketball. We've got some guys back that. That uh, that helped us last year, and we've I, I think we're going to be uh, extremely successful this year if we stay together and do what we're supposed to do. Coach Matt Ragsdale, the assistant boys coach at Nettleton, our guest on the St. Bernard's halftime show. Coach, who are some of the guys that have impressed you so far in practice? Well, I'll tell you this: we've got uh, a couple guys back. Brandon Anderson, who Magnum uh, BA. at Magnum BA, the guy, uh, he's our captain this year, awesome. and he's he's going to uh, I think he's going to lead us in a lot of things. His you know the way he works and the way that he puts the the work that he puts in and you know the extra hours the things that he does um obviously we and, and i don't know how many people know this but we've got devaris whitaker back you know who was all state as a sophomore moved up to iowa and uh he is back at nettleton for his senior year um awesome. i think everybody that saw him as a sophomore was very disappointed to see him go last oh. year but had to move up with his brother in iowa for a little bit but he's He's back, and man, he's 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 changed. He he's a game changer too. Right. And uh, you know, we've seen a lot of good things uh, um, in practice with him. Uh, Jeremiah Turner, you know, he's he he was a great knockdown shooter for us last year. He's gonna he's he's gotten a lot better. He's added some things to his game, and uh, he's he's been looking pretty good. Andre Davis, um, bigger guy. He's he's changed his body. He's kind of changed his game, and he's gotten a lot more explosive and doing some really good things that uh, that we're really liking. Um, sophomore uh, sophomore Taylor Smith is a really good one that I think he can. You know, he's really going to come out. And he's going to he's going to contribute right away. He's going to be really good. Um, then we've got a couple guys out here on the football field that we're gonna that we're gonna see come out here in a little bit. Um, hopefully not too soon because I'd like to see this Nettleton Absolutely. team continue this undefeated streak and Make keep on going. But but the guys we've got in the gym right now, man, we've got a really really good core that I'm just I'm just extremely excited about. Just the way we we love coming to practice. We love coming to practice. It's it's enjoyable. They make it enjoyable. And, uh, you know, hof hopefully we see those results, and I think we will. Coach Matt Ragsdale, assistant boys coach at Nettleton, kind enough to join me on the halftime show, the St. Bernard's halftime show. One thing that I love about you working at Nettleton, Coach, is that uh, you match my passion for the St. Louis Cardinals. And at lunch, every day during the season anyway, you're somebody I can always go to. We got some some dadgum Cub fans on staff. I don't know how that happened. I don't understand it. But it's always a joy to talk Cardinal baseball with you. Let me ask you this: Who is the next Cardinals manager going to be? The next Cardinal manager will be Skip Schumacher. Schumacher. What do you think? Schumacher. If if I if I'm if I'm Mo right now, I'm um, I'm interviewing Skip, and he's going to be the next guy. I also heard, and I, and I know a lot of people are saying it's going to be internal. And on, and honestly, 
I think it'll probably be internal. I think it'll be an Ali Marmol. I think it'll be a Stubby Clap, one of those two guys, is who it'll probably end up being. I would like to see Skip Schumacher. I uh, I read something today. I saw in uh, Benji Molina. Hmm. What do you think about that? That would be interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, that was the first time I, I had heard that name, and uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that. That would be that'd be interesting. I'd say he knows a little bit about baseball. I would say I would say those Molina brothers know a little bit about baseball. No doubt about it. Going to be interesting to see. Just going to be an interesting off season for the Cardinals. Yep. They got they got some uh, big money coming off the books. Um, real quickly, as we've got uh, just a few more minutes here left in the in the halftime show. Um, What's your um, wish list for the Cardinals this offseason? What do you want them to go out and open up the purse strings and buy? My, my wish list is definitely we need, to, we need an upgrade at shortstop. I would love to see Corey Seager. That would be the left-handed bat that we need. Do I think that we go out and get him and we spend the money? I, 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 I don't know. I hope we do. Obviously, a big-time wish list on, in the starting pitching market would be our man Max Scherzer. St. Louis native. And, and I think that would be huge. Do I think we open up the wallet and, and spend on him? Probably not. But I do think that we do go after a one of those prize short stops, one of the top five, and then I think we do go after a little bit of starting pitching. Um, I'll make a prediction and say we get uh, Trevor Story and one of those Giants pitchers, whichever one whichever one uh, that uh, that will sign with us. And it's all coming from the, the mind, the mouth of – Coach Ragsdale, who knows a lot about Cardinal baseball. You know, you should do a Cardinal Talk segment on the front row with Bud Rowe this summer. That's, that would be a good summertime gig for you. I'm going to go ahead and call this, and I'm going to say Cardinal Talk does not happen this year. <laughs> I think e every, everybody listening right now needs to call in and say <laughs> Cardinal Talk needs to be done. The curse <laughs> of Craig Miller and Cardinal Talk will be no longer. Oh, my word. That's no, not what I wanted to hear. Hey, but I think you do a great job on Cardinal Talk. I always love to listen to you. I think you do a great job with it. Um, unfortunately, the Cardinals don't think the same. No, uh, there's a lot of <laughs> people in Cardinal Nation mad at me, calling me a jinx for sure. The but jinx. <laughs> Coach the Ragsdale, jinx. thank you so much for joining us on the St. Bernard's Halftime Show. Looking forward to the, seeing the basketball Raiders do their thing this year. And glad that you're at Nettleton, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You bet you. We'll take a 60-second break. When we come back, Andy Shatley will be back, and he and I will break down the first half, which was wild and wooly. Nettleton 29, Forest City 6. That's the score at half. We'll be right back in 60 seconds with more of the St. Bernard's Halftime Show on the EAB Sports Network. Get lost at Lost Pizza. See why people continue to flock to Northeast Arkansas's coolest and funkiest place to eat. Try one of Lost Pizza's 10 signature pizzas or create your own. Plus, salads, subs, and pastas. And, of course, those famous Delta hot tamales. Lost Pizza offers curbside pickup, dine-in, or delivery. And they also do catering. Lost Pizza with two locations in Jonesboro, 906 Southwest Drive, and on Hilltop at 3410 East Johnson. Order at lostpizza.com or download and order through the Lost Pizza app. Hey, it's Brad Bobo. And as the sideline reporter for Red Wolves football, I've had the chance to see firsthand the great work done by the physicians at Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. JOSM doctors have served the athletes at A-State for more than 40 years. Plus, on any Friday night, you can see their physicians on the sidelines at high school games around the area. Whether you're just starting your athletic career or if you're you know, well past your playing days, JOSM can get you back in the game. To schedule an appointment, call 870-932-1820. Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, excelling in their field so you can excel on yours. St. Bernard's Halftime Show rocks right along here at Forest City where Nettleton has a 29-6 lead over the Mustangs. The Raiders outscored Forest City 14 to nothing in the first quarter. They outscored Forest City 15 to six in the second quarter. Uh, Nettleton's Kobe Bradley got the scoring started with a two-yard touchdown run with 8:51 remaining in the first frame. The go Golden PAT made it seven to zero, and then Cameron Scarlett with an eight-yard run with 6:03 remaining in the first quarter. After the Daniel Golden PAT scores 14-0, Forest City scored first in the second quarter. PAT was no good, so it's 14 to six. Cameron Scarlett with a nine-yard touchdown run with 5.48 remaining in the half, and he also ran in the two-point conversion, made the score 22-6, to six. and then Kobe Bradley with a six-yard run made the score 29-6 to six after the golden point after. Andy, it was a wild and wooly first half. It really was. You know, uh, the way the game started with Nettleton scoring quickly 14 to nothing, that's kind of what we suspected because of how well you know, they're coming into this game and well-balanced offense and defense and the 7-0 and Nettleton 
coming into Four City, and then all of a sudden something happened right there after that, and it was a very weird uh, uh, possession to where uh, Nettleton seemed to intercept the football, and then there was a call that, that uh, I think there was an illegal hands to the face that, that, that negated that, gave some Four City a little bit momentum, and uh, they turned around at the end of the first quarter and then punched one in, uh, made the game a relatively close game. Now, uh, you know, 14 to 6, and, and we kind of had a ball game at that point. Um, then we had a, uh, some some tur odd turn of events there with uh, one of our offensive line, you know, being ejected from the game, which was – I'm sitting there watching that, and I, I, I try not to be too negative on the officials, but there was very little there, and you can go back and watch the video tomorrow. Uh, and even knowing the kid, <laughs> you kind of yes. got to wonder about that too as far right. as who we're talking about here. Right. Uh, but uh, Nettleton came around and, and, and scored again, defensive – Punched him in the mouth, got the ball back in, scored again. Uh, so, so hopefully Nettleton's kind of got that first half squared away, and they can restart this game and continue what they started. Yes, and that offensive lineman that was ejected for unsportsmanlike conduct was Ryan Crawford, our starting center. Not sure what the rules are if he's going to have to set out for the next game or not, but if so, that uh, that's a big blow to this Raider team. We're just about ready to kick off here in the second half. Nettleton will be kicking off. Kendrick McShan kicks it deep. The ball is fielded at about the 11-yard line, and we are underway in the second half. The Forest City ball carrier returns it to about the 29. That's where he is tackled, and that's where the Mustangs will take over first and 10. So the Nettleton defense will take the field. They come up with a huge play in the second quarter as Jordan Pegram forced to fumble. Javante Wallace, he wants me to call him Precious J. I don't know if that really, uh, I don't know if that fits Javante, but that's what he wants to be known as. He got, he had the fumble recovery. You can't, you can't decide your own nickname. <laughs> that's a rule. Well, that's what he wants to be called. So I told him he's got to make some big plays. The quarterback for the uh, Mustangs going from the shotgun. He runs right side and tackled after maybe a gain of one yard. Actually, he got back to the line of scrimmage before he's tackled out of bounds. Second down and 10 for for a city. Well, Jordan Pegram once again causing uh, problems for the offense. He, he likes to operate in the backfield, and when he does, that's going to be a long day for your offense. He's uh, has a tendency to get your attention when he shows up in the backfield and he's been around the football all night tonight. And if we can get some push and, and some of our defensive linemen to kind of break through, uh, that'll, that'll cause some problems with their running back. Direct snap to the quarterback and he's running left side. He is tackled over there by Jordan Pegram. Blake Brown gets it out to about the 38 yard line. That's gonna be a gain of Eight, second down and two, excuse me, third down and two for the Mustangs. Yeah, I, I, I can suspect that Allen Johnson is going to dial up a, a nice little blitz here and create some problems. Uh, you know, the, Four City has completely changed how they're running the offense here. Now they're in the shotgun, whereas they were in the eye backfield in the first half. So they've completely changed their offensive scheme here in the second half. High snap, fielded by the quarterback. He's running left side. He has the first down. He's across midfield. He's got room to run. Curtis Smith tackles him from behind, but not after a big gain. And he advances the ball in, well inside Nettleton territory. It is at the Raider 31-yard line. Number 14, Ladarius Bradley from Four City can run. They've got three or four kids. And, you know, we talked about this before the game. And, and my, my keys to success uh, tonight for Nettleton is to be able to tackle. Uh, and there's been a couple of big plays by Four City, and uh, you know tackling uh, running backs and tackling athletic running backs. Uh, and, and I don't know. I'll have to kind of think through the, you know the season. I'm not sure Nettleton has faced three, two or three or four athletes like Four City has, and they haven't been real successful and turned up into wins. But athleticism and the ability to run the football is not the reason. <laughs> while they're not winning. No, they got uh, some, there are other reasons. They got some dudes out there. That's right. For sure. There's an official's timeout on the field. I believe there was a problem with the chains over there. 10:38 remaining in the third quarter and boy they, now they, they hold on just say they just snapped the ball and good job Jamie Morris a tackle for a loss. They didn't allow Nettleton to get set and Andy that's low budget. 
that's low. They did not allow Nettleton to get set. The officiating crew did not allow the Raiders to get set. They run the play. Jamie Morris says, you're going to do us that way? I'm going to tackle you for a loss. Yeah. Big play by Jamie Morris. Yeah. Second down and 15. What well, in the wide world of sports is going on out there? We'll certainly take the results of that play, but uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what the time, if there was uh, officials time there. There was or officials time out. They're having problems with the chains over there. Yeah, and, and that certainly should have been a neutral reset for right. both sides of the football. But half of our team was jogging in from the sideline whenever they ran the play. Second down and 15 on a weird night here at Forest City. The quarterback is tackled by Orion Pugh, tackled led by number 22, Jamie Morris. We've called his name several times. He's having a heck of a night tonight. Good job by Jamie. Gain of one, it's going to be third down and 14 for Forest City. Yeah, he's uh, that same leg that he was having some issues with. Uh, Jamie, I'm telling you, Jamie has had a rough night tonight. He's yep. a very physical football player, and uh, uh, he is just – he's been on the floor twice tonight. Um, and athletic trainer Nick Haywood is going to be out to check him out once again. He dropped down. He's certain something is – Hurting him. Yeah, Jamie Morris, uh, injury timeout. Jamie Morris, the injured player. It looks like they're actually stretching out a cramp here yep. this time, so I'll certainly take that as a sort of a leg injury. Absolutely. Jamie Morris is having his leg worked on. His Raiders leading 29-6 to six over Forest City. Nine minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And they're going to – Coach Hampton and – what did you say the trainer's name is, Andy? Nick Haywood. Nick Haywood. So Nick and Coach Sampson got Morris up, and he's walking gingerly as one does after a painful cramp. But it's third down and 13 for Forest City. I would assume they're in four-down territory right now. They have two downs to get 13 yards. The ball is on the Nettleton 34-yard line. Let's see if this Nettleton defense can make a statement here once again. Forest City, who ran the ball exclusively out of the eye formation in the first half. They have gone to the spread here in the second. Yeah, they've thrown uh, defensive coordinator Allen Johnson a little curveball with the shotgun and the uh, sprint outs. Going to pass under pressure by Jordan Pegram, and it is caught by Forest City inside the five-yard line. An unbelievable one-handed catch by Ladarius Bradley. And it's first down and goal to go for Forest City. That was a fantastic catch there. Andy. Absolutely. You know, the quarterback had somebody in his face. He had Jordan Pegram in his face and really just threw it up for grabs. And uh, I can tell you that the new gloves that these kids now that have to stick them on it, that's the reason why that happens. That was a one-handed catch on the three-yard line. Probably Between. one of the most athletic catches you're going to see this year. First down and goal to go on a three. High snap over the quarterback's head. And it is a big loss. It's uh, downed on the 21-yard line by the quarterback, but there is a flag on the play. It doesn't look like uh, Forest City's offensive unit was actually set up in a formation that's going to be elite, that's going to be legal. So I uh, would think that this would probably be declined and take the r the result of the negative play here by Coach Hampton. And they're moving the ball back to the inside the three-yard line, the flat, it's, yeah, and they're, they're well, if it not, happened before the snap, ball, okay. Right, yeah. So it's a dead ball foul, so it's. Probably the best thing that could happen to them there. Absolutely, because that was a loss of about 15, and as it is, it's going to be replay the down. It's going to be first down and goal to go on the eight-yard line. Mustang timeout. We'll take it with them, and we'll catch our breath. 8-12 remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton up 29-6. to six. You are tuned in to Raider football on the EAB Sports Network and NTV. No barbecue, but there are people from Memphis that travel to Jonesboro to sample, taste, and enjoy Demos Barbecue. No kidding, they come from Memphis, so no need to go anywhere else. Right here, the best barbecue is at Demos. Any of the ribs, any of the plates, you can enjoy it all at Demos Smokehouse Barbecue. My mouth is watering.
And we welcome you back to Forest City High School. We're with 8-12 remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton has a 29-6 lead over Forest City. However, the Mustangs have the ball first down and goal to go on the Raider 8-yard line after an unbelievable throw and just a circus catch inside the 5-yard line by the Mustangs. I, I believe that was number 14, Ladarius, Ladarius Bradley, Bradley and he made that play. Uh, he, hey, that's an ESPN Sports oh, Center yeah. play, absolutely, and he deserves all the – uh, credit and kudos for an unbelievably athletic play. We've called his name a couple of times this th tonight, and really, you know, Four City is is not for a lack of athletes on their side of the no. football field, but just being a, you know executing and playing solid football has been their problem tonight and and throughout this season. But athleticism and playmaking is not their problem. No doubt about it. Flanoy, the quarterback. Second, excuse me, first down and goal to go from the eight. He's running left side, runs past Jordan Pegram, and he is inside the five-yard line, tackled out of bounds by Juan Badillo at the four-yard line. It's going to be a gain of four, second down and goal to go from the Raider four-yard line. Yeah, well, once again, we have already mentioned in the second half that Forest City's offensive uh, scheme has completely changed what they've gone to is a quarterback in the shotgun, and they're just trying to get out on the edge, to the you know, the entire time, uh, edge right and edge left to try to get away from Nettleton's uh, powerful defensive line. And it looks like a little wildcat formation. The running back, a little confusion in the backfield for Forest City. Direct snap to number 14. He's running right side, trying to get the end zone. Stop short by Cam Phillips. Cam Phillips saved the touchdown right there. Nice tackle by Cam. It's going to be third down and goal to go. Yeah, Ball marked on the three. Yeah, Four City once again gone to a very simple offense. I mean, very simple. Uh, putting somebody in the shotgun and pretty much a wildcat all the way around just depends on who it is and just let them try to make a play. Third down and goal to go. High snap. Quarterback reins it in. Halon Willie. Oh, he is hammered over there by uh, Dorian Tucker, who made the big stop, stopped him before he could get to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down and goal to go. That's a loss of about five yards, it looked like, Andy. It's going to be fourth down and goal to go from the nine. Wow, that, play. That, that was a very impressive play. Dorian Tucker is our free safety. Right. And he tackled for a loss there. Yep. That was an unbelievable sniff out by Dorian Tucker because really all they're doing is direct snapping so there's really no other option for them to run the football so Dorian can actually stick his head in there a little faster. Fourth down and goal to go for the Mustangs on the nine-yard line. Quarterback rolls out right. He's looking to pass. Under pressure, throws it in the end zone. It's intercepted by Dorian Tucker in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. So Dorian Tucker with his second interception of the night. This one, however, counts as opposed to the other one. Interception Raiders first and 10 on the Mustang 20. Big play by Dorian. Well, you know, the quarterback, what, number 14, Ladarius Bradley, he was, he was actually leaking out on in the flats. Well, Jordan Pegram hammered him, <laughs> knocked him to the ground. That was the intended receiver. So the quarterback had no place to throw the football except for just throwing it up for grabs. And Dorian Tucker is not somebody who you want to just throw the football up for grabs. He he, he is a ball hog. Yep. If you throw it up, he's going to go get it. He's Great a, play. He's a good football player for sure. Great job, Dorian. Three men in motion for the Raiders. Cameron Scarlett back to work. He stands on the 15-yard line, pitches to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley running near side, he, and there's a flag on the play as Kobe is forced out of bounds after a gain of about three. Second down is seven. Let's see what this flag is. That's kind of in the area of holding. And is that our center that is yes, down? Yes, Zach Davis. And he's going to be the backup center. Right. So Zach Davis is holding his left ankle. Right. And let's hope that's another one of them cramps. But it doesn't look like he's dealing with it like a cramp. He's the starting center, Ryan Crawford, was ejected from the game with what appeared to be an extremely questionable call. Zach Davis is the backup center, and he is uh, going down right now. And Hayden Partee, who has started at center this year a couple of games, he is coming out to uh, snap the ball. So number 54, Hayden Partee, into the game. He's one of the captains of the team, and you can bet we're in good hands with Hayden at center. Very cerebral, very good young man, heck of a football player.
And we are underway. Scarlet gives the ball to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley bounces out left side. He is thrown out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Well, it's going to be second down and 12 for the Raiders. Yeah, I, didn't, I think at this point, Nettleton, you may see them throw the ball a few times if they're going to be third and long, but they're going to go to Kobe Bradley and Cameron, and they're fixing to start grinding this out. Scarlett with a hard count, and it looks like the Mustangs did jump off sides. So instead of second down and 12, it's going to be second down and seven. Well, digging their way out of this uh, penalty hole, they'll take all the free yards they can get. But uh, I, I, I really have a feeling that you're going to see Kobe Bradley left, Cameron Scarlett right, Kobe Bradley left all the way down the field on this series. Second down and seven for the Raiders, the ball on – their own 23-yard line. Scarlett in the backfield with Kobe Bradley. Braylon King in motion. Scarlett passes to D.J. Willis. D.J. is complete. D.J.'s got the first down. He is tackled, but not before he gets first down yardage. It's going to be first and 10 for the Raiders on the 34, their own 34-yard line. Craig, I'll tell you, as a former quarterback, let me tell you who we really love. We love big, strong tight ends with really good hands that can, that can dig us out of trouble. And that's exactly what DJ has done all season. He is a sure-handed tight end that will get you a first down. And Cameron says, where is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Big target, and he found him. Cameron Scarlett, quarterback keeper this time, running right side. Has the first down, shoved out of bounds, just shy of midfield. It's going to be first and 10 for the Raiders on their own 48-yard line. And Andy, this Nettleton offensive unit doing what they do best, moving the football methodically down the field. Not only moving the football, but setting the tone of the game. You know, just just when you, here, here, here's what I really like about Nettleton. A couple times this season, what you've seen is Nettleton kind of get a little out of sorts, but they, they don't get rattled. They go right back to what they were doing and get the game plan and stick to the game plan. Give the ball to Kobe Bradley. Nothing doing up the middle. He runs left side. Boy, he's hit hard, just shy of midfield. He gets to the original line of scrimmage, and that's about it on that one. It's going to be second down and 10 for Bradley. The clock is at 4.55 and rolling. Nettleton up 29-6 to six here in the third quarter. Yeah, and I'll go back to that same thought. You've seen this multiple times where Nettleton, you know, maybe things don't go your way, but you can't panic. Uh, you can't throw in the towel. You just go back, and you know you're good enough, and you execute, and that's what Nettleton's doing here. Scarlett from the gun. He has got Kobe Bradley and Jaden Brown in the backfield with him. Two receivers up top. DJ Willis lined up as the tight end. Gives to Jaden Brown, running right side, and he is tackled for a big loss. It's going to be a loss of about five yards. It's going to be third down and 15 for the Raiders. Yeah, and, you know, Jaden Brown is a big-time football player, and he's an athletic kid that can make things happen. And every once in a while, you'll see them shift him back into the backfield and try to get the ball in his hands because he is a playmaker. So, uh, Coach Wilson, you know, trying to change formation, change personnel groupings to try to get the football in Jaden's hands. We have an injured player on the field. It's an injured Mustang. And the Forest City staff taking their time getting out there to him. That is Octavian Washington, the injured Mustang. I tell you what, we got time for a break. Let's take a 30-second break with 4-4 remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton up 29-6. You're tuned in to Raider Football on the EAB Sports Network. Get huge savings now at every Cavanaugh dealership. Cavanaugh has a great selection of late model, low mileage, certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And most are still under factory warranty. We have everything, every model, so you're sure to find the vehicle you want. And when you buy it, Cavanaugh, every new and used purchase comes with one year free maintenance. Plus, we buy cars. Bring a vehicle, get a check. Come see us today at one of our dealerships or go to CavanaughCars.com. And we welcome you back to Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. We are at Forest City. We are in the third quarter, four minutes and four seconds remaining. The Raiders have a 29 to six lead over the Mustangs. An injured Mustang on the field is number 50, Octavian Washington, and he is up. 
Looks like he has injured his left leg. He's walking off the field on his own power, but definitely favoring that left leg. I kind of think that he may have had a cramp because they tossed him a water bottle and said, drink drink this. So I, I, I'm thinking maybe that was a cramp in that left leg and he's trying to walk it out. The Raiders have it third down and 14 on their own 44-yard line. Cameron Scarlett and Kobe Bradley in the backfield. Two receivers near side, two receivers up top. Third down and 14 for the Raiders. Scarlett back to pass, under pressure, complete to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley tackled from behind right about midfield. It's going to be fourth down and eight for the Raiders. Ball on the 50-yard line. I'll tell you, number 52, Jacoby Shell uh, for Four Cities, and he's a good-looking football player. He's been very aggressive tonight. He's he's a spirited football player, and you know this is a violent game, and and he's played well tonight. So the Raiders are going to punt fourth and nine. On actually, the ball is on their own 49. Fourth down and nine. Clock is running at 3:25. Scarlett with a quick punt, good punt, lands at about the. 14-yard line, rolls inside the 10. Looks like it is going to be downed at about the 9-yard line. And so it'll be first down and 10 for Forest City, starting from their own 9, with 3-12 remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton leading 29-6. to six. It's, you know, that we talked about that first half being a really odd first half. It's starting to kind of have that same feel in the second half. Uh, you know, Nettleton had a nice little drive they had put together there, and we thought, well, they're going to, you know, put some things together and move the football, unable to. Uh, and here we are still uh, with the same score at halftime. So we hadn't had a whole lot of movement, but uh, if you want to talk about field position and time off the clock, Nettleton has certainly uh, burned a bunch of time off the clock, and now they put uh, Four City in probably one of their worst field positions of the night. Yeah, the Mustangs with, first, with the ball first and 10 on their own nine-yard line. Went with the old I formation through the first half. Their first possession anyway on the second half, they went back to the spread. And I believe and they're going to have to call timeout. They're going to have to call the timeout to figure out what formation they're yeah, running. Yeah, they didn't have the right personnel grouping on the field. So we'll take a timeout with them. We'll take a, a 30 second break with three minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter of a very weird high school football game. Nettleton leads 29 to six. We'll be right back after these words from one of our great sponsors here on the EAB Sports Network. Specialty print and ship store is the safe ship store in Jonesboro. Owner David Leonard wants to help you with all your shipping and printing needs, and they'll always give you the best customer service and highest quality product for the absolute lowest prices in town. So when you need something packed and shipped or when you need printed products, call the safe ship store. Come in today to see all they have to offer. For the best customer service, quality, and prices, visit the safe ship store. 2500 Alexander Drive, Suite C in Jonesboro, 870-333-5068. Welcome back to this broadcast of Raider football on the EAB Sports Network. Nettleton leads 29 to 6, 312 remaining in the third quarter. Four City starting first and 10 from their own at nine. Let me remind you that next Friday night we'll be at home against Valley View, Crosstown Showdown. My friend Randy Myers texted me and said that the score at half tonight is Valley View 7, Green County Tech 0. So we'll be watching that score closely and looking forward to the big game next Friday. Hope that all of you can tune in on NTV or well, I hope that you can be at the game. Nothing better than football Friday night. First and 10 for the Mustangs are going back to the I formation. The give to the tailback and he is stopped by Jordan Pegram right at the line of scrimmage. There's a couple of other Raiders involved and let's as soon as they get up I will get you their number. Jordan made initial contact and Jordan is still on the ground. I think Javante Wallace was in on with him and now we got, is that Jordan still on the As ground? Jordan who is still on the ground and he is favoring his right leg it looks like. So uh, hopefully let's just say that's a hamstring cramp maybe. He's holding the back of his right leg and Let's hope that Jordan is all right. You talk about important cogs to this Nettleton Raider machine. You talk about 
on the offensive line, their center, Ryan Crawford. He was ejected from the game in the second quarter. On the defensive side, you got to say it's big number 90. Jordan Pegram leads the team in tackles for losses with 15. And then you also have uh, starting outside linebacker Jamie Morris on the sideline. So uh, this, this tonight's uh, injury list has not been kind to Middleton. Has not. Jordan is getting up and walking under his own power, which is wonderful to see, and uh, kind of stretching things out. So let's just hope that's uh, – Andy, you're the director of sports medicine at St. Bernard's. You know about these kind of things. Maybe that's just a cramp, you think? Uh, I don't think it was a cramp. You wouldn't see Jordan probably on the ground as a cramp, and it's been pretty cool tonight, so cramps uh, – it's going to be surprising to see cramps tonight. They'll check his right knee or right ankle on the sideline over there. He's just kind of working with it. Hopefully it's just kind of a uh, kind of a stinger or a bruise in his knee. Ball's given to the tailback, and he's got some running room. He's across the 20. He's got a first down. Pushed out of bounds by Dorian Tucker, but not before he has a first down for the Mustangs. He bust out a pretty good run right there. Ball is out to the Mustang 32-yard line. First down for Forest City. Yeah, and now Orion Pugh is slow getting up, and he's limping back to the huddle, and he wasn't happy getting up. So I'd, uh, it, that clock really can't tick fast enough for Nettleton tonight yeah, as far as uh, – some potential injuries happening. No doubt about it. I was really hoping for a turbo clock, and let's get back to Nettleton with everybody healthy. Still could happen. 2.20 remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton with a 23-point lead, 29-6. to six. Need a 35-point lead to make the turbo clock roll. Maybe we can get there sooner rather than later. Halon Willie with a big tackle for loss for the Raiders. It's going to be second down and... 12 for Forest City. Good job over there on the far side by Halon Willie. It's a great tackle. He's a, he's a nice looking athlete on the on the uh, strong safety slash will linebacker position, and and uh, he played that ball well. Got yep. Made a nice tackle, wrapped up one on one tackle in the backfield for loss. Be a loss of one. Second down and 11 for Forest City. Clock is at 150 and ticking. Raiders sideline Channing defense. Would be nice to have a good defensive play. I see a Kylan Butler on the right side, and that's a run left side, and boy, he is hit hard out there by Markell and Barber. Markell and laid the proverbial lumber to the Forest City running back. Gain of a couple. It's going to be third down and eight for Forest City. Craig, I'm telling you, there's been four or five big league hits tonight um uh, I, I it's tough to watch up here in the press box because <laughs> man you can hear that all the way up here and mark ellen barber uh he came in and made a tackle with authority and th those are the ones that you remember tomorrow morning absolutely mark ellen barber like a heat seeking missile on that one heck of a play by the raider senior cornerback mark ellen barber less than a minute to play in the third quarter nettleton up 29 to 6. for city it's going to be a quarterback keeper left side he's got a first down and he is Tackled over there, it looked like he stopped running. He's shoved back. He got the first down and then some, and then he went backwards a little bit. Tackled by Kylan Goodlow, but he did get the first down. That that was one of the rarest plays that I think I've ever seen. Like the quarterback stopped running and turned and said something to the Nettleton sideline, like right. while he was being tackled. Like I don't know if it was a a move that he made on somebody, and uh, he literally stopped running. The play wasn't over, and he turned and looked and maybe said something to Nelson sideline. I, this has got to be one of the, the most austere games I've seen in a long time. A lot of weirdness out there, a lot of um, chippiness, as they like to say, contention out there on the field for sure. First and ten for the Mustangs. They give to the tailback. He shifts field, gets across midfield. Javante Wallace and – also in on the stop for Nettleton is that's J Caden, Caden Newsom. Newsom. And that's the end of the third quarter. So we'll take a 60-second break, have the fourth quarter when we come back. At the end of three frames is Nettleton 29, Forest City 6. You're tuned in to Raider Football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Across the state of Arkansas, Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville join you in cheering on our favorite teams. We applaud that extra effort that makes our schools and activities an important part of our communities, more now than ever. 
Working as a team to make our communities better by helping you reach your goals, that's what happens at Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville, home of me banking, member FDIC. If you've injured your neck or back, or if you've been in a car accident, you should call the doctors at the Vets Clinic. They've been helping the residents of Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas for over 20 years now. Many people don't know what to do or where to go after a wreck. Go to the Vets Clinic. You can call them now at 931-3722 or find them on the web at thevetsclinic.com. If you have a bulging or herniated disc, let the doctors at the Vets Clinic help you like they've helped so many others. Call 931-3722 or go to the BetsClinic.com. And we welcome you back to Forest City High School where Nettleton has a 29 to 6 lead over Forest City the start of the fourth quarter. Forest City with the changing of the quarter they'll be moving from right to left on your radio dial here in the fourth quarter. They're going from the I formation, which they've been able to run the ball pretty effectively against the Raiders. I still do not see Jordan Pegram out there, which is bad news for sure for Nettleton. Running back, bounces out right side, and he is nicely contained over there on the far side by Markell and Barber and Curtis Smith. Looked like he had a little room to run there for just a second, Andy, but as it is, he only gains one yard. It's going to be second down and nine. That's a great job of stringing that out, uh, Halon. Willie and all them, uh, you know, he, he thought he had the corner there and they strung it out and, and uh, al allowed him to turn back inside to where all of his buddies were. So it's a great job. That could have turned into a big play. As it is, it's a gain of one, maybe two. Second down and nine is what the scoreboard says. That's what I'll go with. Second down and nine for Forest City on the Nettleton 44-yard line. Nettleton with a 29-6 to six lead here. 11 minutes and 10 seconds and ticking is the clock. 11 minutes remaining in the game. Quarterback rolling out left side, looking for room to run. He is met by Cam Phillips. Also in on the stop for Nettleton is Jamie Morris. Gain of about four. It's going to be third down and five for Forest City. Ball on the Nettleton 41-yard line. See Kylan Butler coming off the field. Let's see who, who comes in for him. Is that the... Uh, Javante Wallace back in the game. Yeah, Javante is out there. Jorge Salas also out Cam there. Cam Phillips, the Jorge S yeah. Looks like Cam maybe having a little equipment issue. Jorge helped him out. So third down and five for the Mustangs. Big play right here with the ball on the Raider 41-yard line. The Mustangs are going to pass. Going for it all. All the way down to the end zone. It is intercepted by the Raiders. Intercepted in the back of the end zone. And that is Middleton's number 16, Kylan Goodlow, with a big interception. First down Raiders. Big play, Kylan Goodlow. It's a great play. You know, the quarterback just threw it as far as he could throw it. There was really no intentions of being around any wide receiver for Forest City. Uh, it's kind of a blind throw, just kind of throwing it up and hoping for something good and, and – and Colin Goodlow was the only person who really saw what was going on. Chase chased it all the way down, caught it, uh, double tapped his feet in the back of the end zone, and uh, for a touchback. And now Nettleton's in, in uh, on the offensive side of the ball now. Cameron Scarlett, the senior signal caller for the Raiders, back to work. Three receivers near side. Scarlett from the gun gives to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley finds a gap. On the right side, good job by the right side of the offensive line. The pile is moving forward, and it's got a first down. So Kobe Bradley, who has undoubtedly crossed the 1,000-yard mark. You know, I was just fixing to talk about that. Uh, I, I, I would have to say that he's for sure, you know, over 100 to 120 yards tonight because he's been all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and give him credit. We already talked about that tonight. I'll be excited to see what the final uh, box score is for him tomorrow. First and 10 for the Raiders on their own 34-yard line. Two receivers near side for the Raiders. One split out far left. Savion, pretty boy Floyd in motion. Scarlett and Bradley in the backfield. Scarlett gives to Bradley, running left side. And he is going to be tackled for a loss. 
Going to be a loss of a couple for Bradley. It's going to be second down and 12 for the Raiders. The clock is at 9:18. Edelson up 29 to six. Yeah, you're you're going to see Coach uh, Hampton put the ball on the floor uh, and keep it on the ground. Uh, continue to let that clock run. Uh, I I would love to see Nettleton's offensive series take up this entire nine minutes of the fourth quarter. Forest City with some wholesale defensive substitutions, it looked like. One of the guys jumped off sides right there. So instead of second down and 12, it's going to be second down and seven, which you can bet makes Coach Clint Wilson, the offensive coordinator for the Raiders, a very happy man. Yeah, that and, and for, to go from second and long to second and seven, uh, uh, takes it away from a passing throw, uh, passing down to a running down. Start it from the gun, gives to Bradley, and boy, he is met immediately. And that's a flag that is flying. It looked like maybe a horse collar tackle to me, Andy. Yeah, that uh, it almost like look a clothesline. Yeah. And, and uh, Kobe definitely didn't see that coming no, out. There didn't. was defensive line lineman for uh, Forest City went unblocked in the backfield. Yeah, it's a face mask is what it's called. It's going to be of the five-yard variety also, so it's going to be third and short. Will it be third and short or will it be second oh, down sorry. and short? Yep, yeah, they'll, yep, they'll replay yep. the down, right. I believe. Second and short. So it's going to be second down and two for the Raiders. Clock is at 8.38 and ticking. I joined my broadcast partner, Andy Shatley, in saying roll, clock, roll. 29-6, to six, Nettleton with a 23-point lead over Forest City, who's played with an awful lot of – Passion tonight. Second down and two in motion is Savion Floyd. Cameron Scarlett's going to keep it. Dodges a tackler, has the first down across midfield, still on his feet. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 25, and he keeps on going forward all the way down to the 15 yard line before he's finally brought down. Big time run by Cameron Scarlett as he putting this team on his shoulders as he's done all year long. You know, really, uh, you saw there in the last of that play, he refused to go out of bounds, right. and as a senior quarterback, he knows exactly what's going on here. He does not want to stop the clock. Let the clock roll. Uh, that was a great run, and at the, end of the at the end of that play, you could tell he was still thinking about what needed to happen. Yep. He refused to go out of bounds. Now Big you time. see the clock continue to run. Yep. Smart play by a smart football player, Cameron Scarlett. So first and ten Raiders. Ball on the 15-yard line of the Mustangs. Gives the ball to Kobe Bradley. Kobe Bradley bounces out left side. He's at the 10. Eludes a tackler. He's at the 5. Kobe Bradley into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. Craig, you know, we sing Kobe Bradley's praises, and rightfully so, but I'm going to say this again. That play was about to be dead on about the four-yard line, and Jaden Brown knocked the defensive player into the end zone and Kobe walked into the end zone. There are two plays tonight where those two athletic individuals have helped each other. One block for one, one scored, and you got to give the hats off to both of those players because it takes 11 guys to put the ball in the end zone. Big time block for sure, downtown Jaden Brown. That six point play by the Raiders makes the score 35 to six with 736 remaining in the game. Daniel Golden, on for the extra point, and as he's done all night long, Daniel Golden punches it through. That makes the score Nettleton 36, Forest City 6, 736 remaining in this game. Tell you what, let's take a 30 second break while we set up the kickoff. 736 remaining in the game, Nettleton up 30 over Forest City. You're watching Raider football on the EEB Sports Network. On the Front Row with Bedro is brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center and Toyo Tires. Where there's always one thing you can count on, we go the distance for you. Before you hit the road for a trip across country or across town, drop by Gateway Tire and Service Center and check out the great deals on Toyo Tires. Whether it's tires or auto repair, you can always count on one thing. At Gateway Tire and Toyo Tires, we go the distance for you. At Gateway Tire in Paragold and Jonesboro, we got the distance for you. And we welcome you back to Sam Smith Stadium on the campus of Forest City High School where Nettleton has a 36-6 lead over Forest City with 7.36 remaining in this game. On to kick off is Kendrick McShan. McShan booms it deep. Ball's caught on about the 19-yard line by Forest City. And... 
Runner is still on his field, on his feet, reverses field. Curtis Smith finally brings him down at about the 36 yard line and that's where for Forest City will take over first and 10. Pretty good return there by the Mustangs. Yeah, Lavarius Bradley has been all over the field tonight. He, he, he's one of the more athletic people probably on the field on both sides of the ball. Uh, he's got, the coaches for Forest City has, has tried every way possible to get the, the football in his hands because he's an absolute playmaker. And you can see him, uh, he's gassed right now uh, because he's been all over the field. So the Mustangs will take over first and 10 from their own 37 yard line. Nettleton seven minutes and 23 seconds away from moving to eight and O on the season. They're either gonna have to call a timeout or they're gonna get a delay a game right here. And I believe they're going to, they're gonna take the delay of game. Yeah, delay of game against Forest City. Want to remind everybody to hang around for the Real Estate Nate postgame show where we will also name the JOSM player of the game and close out your evening with the Kavanaugh Auto Group Friday Night Light scoreboard show on 95.3 The Ticket. Forest City's favorite son, Will Oswalt, will be hosting that. First down and 15 for the Mustangs. Fumble on the play. And it looks like it's recovered by Forest City. It is recovered by the Mustangs. It actually gained a couple of yards on the fumble. It's going to be second down and 14 after the one-yard gain on the fumbled snap. Craig, I don't know if we've talked about this or y'all talked about this last week, but I noticed a lot of the athletes tonight have pink accents all over their uniforms, yep. and uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Nice tackle over there by the Raiders outside line, uh, linebacker, Demayan Person. Hey, getting a little playing time while uh, Jamie Morris is on the sideline. That's right. Great job by Demayan, who um, intercepted the ball and took it all the way back to the house last week. It was ruled out of bounds, but nice play by Demayan. Yes, uh, there's uh, things more important in this life than football games, and those brave women who are battling breast cancer, definitely up there. God bless those folks and uh, Nettleton's players. Uh, representing them tonight with with some pink, as is Forest City yeah. as well. A lot of a lot of players on both sides wearing some pink. Yeah, my mother uh, had breast uh, two bouts of breast cancer. Uh, she's a long time survivor. Whenever I see that pink, it yeah. it makes my heart smile. Little reverse there by the uh, by the Mustangs, and they got some room to run. First down near midfield. Good low and. Halon Willie finally making the stop right at the 49 yard line, but they're gonna move the chains. It's gonna be first down and 10 for the Mustangs. 5.56 remaining in the game, Nettleton up 36 to six. Yeah, it's gonna be a holding call. I, I honestly, from up here, there was about three holds. I just didn't know which one they were gonna call. <laughs> so it negates the big play, and instead of a first down, it's gonna be third down and very long for Forest City. Third down, we'll call it third and 20. Ball is on the Forest City 28 yard line. The clock is rolling, 548. Nettleton with a 30 point lead, 36 to six on what has been a very contentious and a very strange night here at Forest City. They give to the tailback and he is hit immediately by Blake Brown. One of the defensive stars of this Nettleton team, the inside linebacker, Blake Brown. It's going to be fourth down and 18 for the Mustangs. And with 5-18 remaining in the game and running, clock running, they're going to send their punt team out. Yeah, we really haven't had a chance to call Blake Brown's number much tonight because uh, Forest City seems to be going away from him all night. And that's the reason why Jamie Morse has been named been called a lot. It's all coming to him. But great job by uh, Blake Brown right there, sniffing that one out and, and another negative play for Nelson's defense. So Forest City with the punt team on, high snap, nearly blocked by Javante Wallace, but he gets the punt off and then the Raiders get away from it. It rolls down to the Nettleton 38 yard line and that's where Nettleton will take over first and 10 with 440 remaining in this game. Nettleton up 30, and let's see if they send out Scarlett in the first team or if they put in the reserves here on what figures to be perhaps the final drive. 
And it looks like they are going to put it, send out their backup quarterback, Curtis Smith. I tell you the truth, though, Andy, over the last couple of games, we've Curtis has got to play an awful lot, and he is a he has acquitted himself very nicely. Keandre Pope in the backfield with him, and he has had a very good season as well, spelling Kobe Bradley. Curtis Smith keeps it, and he is tackled at about the Mustang 45-yard line after a gain of seven. It's going to be second down and three. These are really valuable series that uh, Coach can uh, evaluate their second and third string that absolutely need to be in there for championship teams. And also, like I talked about earlier, uh, legacy programs. You need to be able to replace seniors rolling out at a, every year uh, with experienced folks. And you love to see uh, your, your multiple depth levels getting experience on Friday nights. Curtis Smith gives the ball to Key Andre Pope. Key Andre running left side. Looks like he's going to be tackled short of the first down. Ball is marked at the 47-yard line, a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and one for the Raiders. The clock is at 337 and ticking. Nettleton 36, Forest City 6. So, Craig, whenever um, Cameron is not in the game in the quarterback and they have to do some sort of a quick punt, what happens there? You know, I have not seen that this year. I do not know. Middleton hasn't punted very often this year. Curtis Smith's going to quarterback keep it, and he's not going to get the first down as he is. When I say he's not going to get the first down. That young man just bulls forward, and I believe he did get the first down on sheer effort. Heck of a job by Curtis Smith. They're moving the chains. I think he heard you. Yeah, I think he did too. I think he took it as a personal challenge. <laughs> he said the TMC he just was like, said, Wait a minute. I'm not going to get the first down. <laughs> and he just put his head down and just kept turning his feet, and, and uh, that – you know, honestly, if you're talking about three minutes left in the game, one first down is huge because you're talking about two and a half minutes that you can run off the clock in three plays. And that was a big play there by Curtis Smith. My apologies, Mr. Smith. I think you're going to have to talk to him after the game. I think I am. I doubted him. Uh, he was hit two yards behind the line of scrimmage, and he just bulled his way forward. That's a strong young man right there. Curtis gives the ball to Keandre Pope. The Pope is hit in the backfield. He's still on his feet. And they whistle him down after forward progress. Still going to be a loss on the play, a loss of about five as Keandre just had nowhere to run. Second down and 15 for the Raiders, 220 on the clock. We have, we have a few more offensive, uh, new offensive lineman faces in the game. Uh, number 70, Kylan Gates. Um, do we have... 62, I think we have a new Tyler Wheelis is playing right tackle. Yep. So we do have a few new faces in the game. Tyler Wheelis with a very sweet mullet lined up next to his buddy Kobe Miller. Number, Curtis Smith. Number seven, Kendrick McShann's out here playing wide receiver. So there are some substitutes in the game here for Nettleton. Keandre is thrown down like he might have got back to the line of scrimmage before he was Pushed back. There is a flag on the play. 144 remaining on the clock. Nettleton up 36 to 6. Let's see what this flag is all about. It's going to be holding against the Raiders. So they'll back it up 10. It'll be second down and maybe 25 for the Raiders. Second down and very long. Let's put it that way. It was second and 15. That'll be second down and 25. 143 on the clock and rolling. Second down, so we can get a couple more snaps in, take this one to the house with a 36-6 win. Smith and Pope in the backfield. And it's a snap that he wasn't ready for. Curtez picks it up, and, boy, it's going to be another big loss as Nettleton going the wrong direction. That ball is about the 19-yard line. If he just kind of took his eye off the ball there, Andy. Yeah, we're third down, though, and the clock differential is about 40 seconds or so. So, um, you know, as a third down and 40 seconds to go, I mean, they can down it right here, and that's ultimately going to be the game unless Four City calls timeout, which I'm not sure why you would do that. But Down 30. There's enough cl uh, time here to down the ball and the game to be over. Clock is at 42 seconds. 
Curtis Smith gives the ball to Keandre Pope. Keandre Pope running left side and gets some positive yardage. But that will be the last play of the game. The clock is at 29 seconds and rolling. The play clock is at 34. So Nettleton will not even have to snap it again. Uh, the officials time out for an injury. And it's going to be a, a, a Mustang that's down, number 73, Elijah Harding. That's a big young man, 6'7", yeah. 360. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah. So that will stop the clock with 24 seconds. Not sure if they're going to have to snap the ball again. If so, I'm assuming it's going to be a punt by the Raiders, but injury well, timeout. Yeah, after the injury timeout, they will start the clock again whenever everybody gets set again, and they won't have to snap the ball because they'll have to reset the game, the uh, play clock also. So we'll call uh, – we will call that the Domino's delivery of the game. Nobody delivers like Domino's, and we appreciate Domino's Pizza and all of our great sponsors, NEA Baptist, Get Better with Baptist, St. Bernard's at the Heart of Great Medicine for 120 years, First National Bank, Kavanaugh Auto Group to see their complete inventory. From the comfort of your home, log on to KavanaughCars.com. Hang around in just a matter of seconds. We're going to enter into the post-game show presented by Real Estate Nate. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, call Nate Lipsky. That's Real Estate Nate at 261-3927. Andy and I will put our heads together in the break before the post-game show, and we'll name the JOSM player of the game. That is Jones Boyle Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Getting you back in the game for more than 40 years and make sure that you close out your night tonight with a Kavanaugh Auto Group Friday Night Lights scoreboard show. Our good buddy Will Oswalt has all the scores for you as soon as they go final and he's going to talk with coaches and broadcasters. Who knows? He might even talk with Coach Stephen Hampton. He might even talk to me on the way home. Um, anyway, that's the Friday Night Lights scoreboard show comes on it's probably on right now actually it's supposed to come on at 9 30 and on 95 3 and 96 9 the ticket we're in an injury timeout right now nettleton is leading the game 36 to 6 24 seconds left on the clock elijah harding the injured mustang we sure hope that young man is all right very large young man and he is walking off the field He's trying to walk off the field. Looks like he's having a tough time putting some weight on one of his legs. Andy, I know you were watching the situation as I was running yeah, through a sponsor. Left, left knee of his is not feeling good. We sure hope that young man is all right. Yeah, and I love to see uh, the, net, the athletic trainer from Nettleton coming over here and helping uh, Forest City's player because, you know, we're, you know, the football games can be contentious. Uh, you can be aggressive, and we can play hard, and it's going to be a violent sport. But at the end of the day, you know, these are these are these are men on both sides of the field, and uh, and after the game's over with, we shake hands and we move on away. That's exactly right. And let's hope that Elijah Harding is all right. He's off the field, and the uh, clock is at 24 seconds. They should start it here, and they do. The play clock is at 24 as well and so this will the clock will expire without Nettleton having to run a play and so your final score is going to be Nettleton 36 Forest City 6 stay tuned don't go anywhere because we will have the real estate Nate post game show it's Nate Lipsky at 261 39 27 there's the final horn Nettleton gets out of here they move to 8 and 0 on the season with a 36 to 6 final we'll take a Two-minute break. When we come back, we will have the Real Estate Nate post-game show. Hopefully, we'll have a, a talk with Coach Stephen Hampton. We'll be right back after two-minute break. You are watching Raider Sports, Raider Football on the EEB Sports Network. Maybe your instincts tell you not to trust everything you hear in the media. We get it. It's only human to question things. So if you're still questioning whether or not you should get vaccinated, ask the people you know right here in Arkansas who you really trust, like your doctor, people you've seen with your own eyes, the real threat of COVID, and the remarkable effectiveness of America's vaccines. That's why St. Bernard's Healthcare is asking you to take a stand with us and sit for a shot. Learn more at sitforashot.org. 
You can rely on K-13 Computer's 40 years of experience to help you. K-13 provides you with solutions to your computing problems. Whether you need repairs or IT service for your business, let K-13 be your first call. K-13 also is your go-to spot for building that gaming PC. They have knowledge, experience, and the products to help you. K-13 Computer's 2106 South Caraway next to Barton's Home Improvement. Call 627-5477. That's 627-5477. Or visit K13Inc.com. K-13 Computers. Evolve Bank and Trust is your local source for home and business loans. Evolve Bank and Trust is making banking personal again with our friendly customer service and fast turnaround times. Your hometown bank for more than 90 years. Evolve Bank and Trust's dedicated staff can help you realize the dream of owning a home or help grow your small business with confidence. For more information, visit our office at 111 East Huntington, Suite A in Jonesboro, or call 870-933-2480. That's 870-933-2480. Or check us online at getevolved.com. Evolve Bank and Trust, equal housing lender. Your medical needs are personal, and the way you manage those needs should be personal as well. The team at Southern Home Healthcare is local, knowledgeable, and courteous, giving you the customized care you and your family deserve. When facing breathing challenges, the on-staff respiratory therapists at Southern Home Healthcare provide support and guidance just for you, and you can sleep better with the help of their CPAP and BiPAP therapy. Plus, treat your strains, sprains, and pain with the help of Southern Home Healthcare's high-quality bracing devices. Go online to southernhomehealthjonesboro.com. And we welcome you to the postgame show here at Forest City where Nettleton has defeated Forest City 36-6. They improved to 8-0 on the season, and they also improved to 5-0 in conference. Forest City falls to 2-6, 1-4 in conference. And this is the... Uh, Post game show presented by Real Estate Nate. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, call Nate Lipsky. That's Real Estate Nate at 261-3927. What a game we had here tonight, Andy, as Nettleton pulls out a 30-point win over a Forest City team that really gave it everything that they had. Yeah, Forest City uh, played probably one of the better games that they played this season. And once again, we had talked early in the game, they, they're not for a loss for athletes. Right. Uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball, Darius uh, Bradley created some problems for Nettleton. He very athletic. Couple of the running backs for Four City, uh, there were some holes and they were they were running in some open grass tonight. But, but Nettleton is a very strong, balanced, solid, disciplined team, and they continue to go back to their game plan and kind of got knocked off course a couple of times. But, but championship football games reset go back to your game plan don't panic bend don't break get back to playing solid football and, and, and you saw that from Nettleton on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball they scored enough points to put this game away the defensive side of the ball they had a couple of takeaways and a couple of stops and only gave up six points so at the end of the day this is a very very solid win for a very strong football team. No doubt about it. A team that moves to 8-0 and on the season and 5-0 and in conference, the undefeated Nettleton Raiders. Before we uh, name the JOSM player of the game, let's break down this game. Nettleton got the party started early in the fourth quarter. Their first two possessions, they scored touchdowns. One was on a Kobe Bradley two-yard run, and the second one was on a – um, nine-yard run by, excuse me, eight-yard run by the All-State quarterback Cameron Scarlett. That made the score 14 to nothing after two point after kicks by the Golden Boy Daniel Golden. The second quarter, Forest City got on the board first. A um, four-yard touchdown run by number 22 for the Mustangs, Darius Chris. That made the score 14-6. to six. The two-point conversion was no good. Then with 548 remaining in the second quarter, Cameron Scarlett with a five-yard touchdown run, and then he just wheeled his way into the end zone on the two-point conversion. That made the score Nettleton 22, Forest City 6. Kobe Bradley scored again in the second quarter as he ran a six-yard uh, touchdown run in with 428 remaining to make the score 29 to uh, 28 to 6. Daniel Golden uh, chipped in the PAT, setting the score at 29 to 6 at half. The third quarter was scoreless. Nobody scored in the third quarter. The fourth quarter, 
Kobe Bradley once again with a 15-yard touchdown run with 7.36 remaining in the game. Daniel Golden added his fourth point after it made the score 36-6. to If you're keeping score at home, Daniel Golden was four for four on point afters. Kobe Bradley with three touchdowns. Cameron Scarlett with a couple of touchdowns of his own and Nettleton finishes with a 36-6 win. Our JOSM player of the game brought to you by Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, getting you back in the game for more than 40 years. The player of the game is Nettleton's senior star running back, Kobe Bradley. As we just mentioned, he ran for three, yard, three touchdowns, and he eclipsed 1,000 yards on the season. And Andy, as you said, he really – uh, took this game over when the Raiders needed a big performance from their playmaker. Yeah, and, and some of the most successful football uh, programs, uh, they they, they uh, base their entire offensive scheme on the running game. And having a strong, stable running game to where you can go back to and dependable, you can put the ball in his hands and he can get you yards and protect the football, uh, that is such a, a dependable way to move the ball down the field and when things are going haywire or you can't block somebody or you're having problems throwing the football down the field, if you can turn and hand it to somebody like Kobe Bradley, uh, man, that really makes an offensive coordinator's job a lot easier. Him scoring three times tonight, but three big scores, and really it was a point to where we ne we needed to kind of set the tone for the game, and he absolutely did that. And, and we kind of did some math in our head, and I really think that, you know, he needed 111 yards tonight to eclipse the 1,000-yard mark tonight. I'm 100%, 99.5% certain that he eclipsed the 1,000 mark tonight. Congratulations, Kobe Bradley, for already a great season and a, and a much-needed um, game tonight for a, a, a very chaotic game here at Forest City but controlled by the running game of Nettleton. No doubt about it. So the Raiders move to 8-0 and on the season, and we will uh, do it again next Friday night. They take on Valley View, who defeated Greene County Tech tonight 17-0. to That'll be a crosstown showdown at Raider Field next Friday night. Andy, that's going to be the place to be in Craighead County. Raider Field next Friday night as the Blazers come calling on the undefeated Raiders. Yeah, absolutely. You know, both teams are doing well this season. Both teams very talented. And, uh, you know, Craighead County Showdown. Yep. Uh, who would have ever thought back in the day <laughs> <laughs> when you were in, uh, and I were in high school that a rivalry in a football matchup like this could have happened? That's right. I would have never dreamed that. And so right. it's very exciting to see those two quality programs, quality schools, quality school districts face off next Friday night. And, and if you don't have anything to do, if you do have something to do, cancel it. There you go. And if you don't have anything to do, come on out Friday night. And let's watch some great football. And if you can't come out next Friday night, Andy and I have got you covered. That's We're right. going to be bringing the uh, the game to you on 94.1 Bob FM, 80s, 90s, and whatever, and also on Nettleton Television YouTube channel. Really glad that you uh, tuned in tonight as Nettleton wins this one, 36-6, moved to 8-0 and on the season, to 5-0 and in conference. We'll do it again next Friday night. For Andy, for Brady Wade, our excellent producer back at EAB, for the whole NTV crew here, Caleb Andrews and Brandon Troutman and Blake Isbell and Lindsey Miller. I'm Craig Miller wanting, wanting to say – Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great weekend, everybody. Raider Pride is justified. Raider, Raider Pride, Pride forever. forever. To Nettleton Raider football on 94.1 Bob FM. This has been a presentation of the EAB Sports Network. 94.1 Bob FM is KIYS HD.